Hello. Hello. I should be live. Yes, I'm going to assume I am live. Um, hello, Melvin, and I don't even know what the little fetus shit is. Um, but thank you for joining us. Um, listen, today, like, I'm doing a second stream because I want to experiment with doing more streams during the week. I used to do more streams, uh, when I first started streaming, then I went down to, like, one a week, and then I went down to maybe one a week. But I don't know, like, I have a much quieter place right now. Like, I can actually stream with my door open. Um, I might have a, a, a cat guest star if, if he decides to pop up. He usually visits me. <laughs> Hello, uh, Mysterio. Um, but yeah, for today's uh, stream, um, I was actually researching something that didn't pan out. So, um, yeah, as far as covering chuds, um, I was thinking I might fall back on my old plan before the neurotic stuff happened and maybe look at uh, some EFAP highlights. Yay! Um, I do have four comic books to go over. Um, which is always fun. Um, yes. Yes. Um, yes, we will be turning the frogs freaking gay. We will be turning the frogs gay. We will. Um, <laughs> yes. Uh, let's see. So, what, four comic books, maybe EFAP later. I've decided. I mean, you guys might be shocked to hear this, but Gary hasn't emailed me about uh, having a discussion. By the way, Gary, if you're watching, uh, R-S-E-T-L-O-C-K-3 at gmail.com. R-S-E-T-L-O-C-K-3. Um, and honestly, that goes for anybody else. If you're watching and you, you know, and you want to talk, um, just email me and let me know uh, what's up, why you want to talk, you know. Funny, you know, I used to, when I streamed more, I used to have more conversations. So maybe open that door a bit more? I don't know. Um, I tell you what, we'll go over four comic books. And if somebody wants to email me and have a conversation after I'm covering the four comic books, maybe we'll just do that rather than covering some chuds. I do have shit to edit. Um, my Adobe's still down, so like streams are how I'm making videos now. Um, it should be up. Actually, I'm plan on getting it back up tomorrow so hopefully i'll get a video out tuesday um by the way podcast is tomorrow um this week on the podcast we are covering the first four episodes of fallout which i haven't finished all four yet but so far is a uh, minor spoilers for tomorrow's podcast pretty pretty good show unless it falls off in the last in this in episodes three and four um w wonky i guess um, it's not, you know, well, I'll get into it. We'll also be covering the new Alex Garland movie, uh, Civil War, and then we will be covering, uh, the middle half, or middle half, middle third of Star Trek Discovery Season 1. Hey, there he is. I said I might have a cat Death Star. There he is. Um, what do you think of, uh, PlayStation? Uh, I have a PlayStation 4. Um, I, I... I think the PlayStation's a really good video game system. I really do, and I still do. Even Like, I loved the PlayStation back uh, with the PlayStation 2. That being said, the way Sony has run the company has been is so much worse than it used to be. I remember PlayStation 2 came out, and Sony announced that we will never, ever charge for online gameplay, and all our games will always be backwards compatible. Yeah, um, they don't operate that way uh, anymore. Um, they are, they are very, uh, they're very different. Yeah. In case you guys are wondering, that's Elam. Um, it's just him and me in the house right now, so we are, we are, we are chilling out. Um, just the two of us. Yes, he, he is, he is so fluffy. He is so, so fluffy. He's also a kitten. I want to say, um, he might be almost a year old, actually, now that I think about it. But yeah, he, he, he still has a little bit of playfulness in him, too. Um, anyways, um, I guess we just go ahead and dive into comic books. We're, we're 20 past, and yeah. Nintendo has similar problems. Well, I don't know if Nintendo ever announced that they would be uh, 
free to play and they I, i'm almost certain they've never announced they'd be backwards compatible because nintendo has never been backwards compatible their entire run um that being said i mean playstations were disc systems and it seemed like oh well you know they might actually be able to maintain being backwards compatible and then they just said fuck it we're not even gonna try they 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 they, they were doing it with the ps2 and ps1 and i'm not sure how the ps3 worked because i was broke and i didn't get ps3 but then i got ps4 and boy oh boy that's not backwards compatible at all um but yeah um you guys ready for some comic books No, his name is Elam, not Elon. I would never name anyone Elon. Ew. Ew. And I feel sorry for people named Elon now. Like, that name's been forever ruined. Um, the dude whose legacy is now buying and ruining Twitter. Now, like, Twitter was a bastion of amazingness, but a lot better than it is now. That's for damn sure. Um, hey, Elon. Elon. Hey, you want to come closer? You want to see yourself on camera? Come on. Come on. Come on. I'm an old man. I don't want to come get you. This is Elam. He's a little kitten. He's pretty good about being picked up for being a kitten. Oh, he's not gonna stay though. You know. <laughs> All right. Uh, comic books. Was the Wii backwards compatible with GameCube? That actually does sound familiar. Now you bring that up. Um, that does sound familiar. My Wii broke a while ago, so I, I it, it's been at least 15 years, probably for the Wii for me. Um, yes, anyways, um, let's do some comic books, guys. Um, uh, first book is the one that, uh, you know, I, that was pretty clear. I'm definitely covering this. It's gonna be Ultimate X-Men number two, and after the, the mystery book, way I did Ultimate X-Men number one, because, uh, that was so unexpected, and this is a... Uh... Hello, Lucifer. Um, Ultimate X-Men number one was very unexpected. Um, so I was excited to get into Ultimate X-Men number two, just to see how this story evolves. Um, this is the variant cover I picked. Uh, yes. Anyways, it opens right up with the... the, the ultimate setup here a diabolical genius known as the maker used time travel to hide his ah used time travel to create his ideal earth by systematically preventing anyone from ever becoming a superhero except for those on the secret makers council whom he stationed to rule over different regions of the world including the eastern territory of high no kuni i'm sure i'm slaughtering that <laughs> there on the night of her middle school graduation, a young girl named Hisako Ichaki, I'm slaughtering that, I'm sure, um, had unusual powers awakened to protect her from a car accident and from a sinister shadow seeking vengeance against the people who had tormented Hisako's childhood friend, uh, Sunbasa, um, into taking his own life. The shadow promised Hisaki uh, that the first victim would be Suvasa's coach. The next day, the coach was found dead in mysterious circumstances. And yeah, they're actually calling it Shadow now, which I mean, it was drawn like a child before, but it, it's even more of a clue that this is probably gotta be Ultimate Shadow King. Um, writer and artist Peach Momoka. Um, script adaptation, Zach Davidson. Um, letter, uh, VC Travis Lanham. Uh... 
Let's see, Peach Mawaka did not do this variant cover I did. Uh, who did this? It says Betsy Cola? Betsy Cola. Okay, Betsy Cola did this that variant cover. All right, cool deal. And, you know, you just open with her laying in bed, and she's looking at a crack in the wall. And you just see her eye, and you're just looking at the crack. And now there's cracks on her face. Normal. That's normal stuff, right? Yeah. Um, and then, you know, she's, she's outside. She's with her friend. Uh, thanks for ditching school with me, Hisako. Hisako. Don't worry about Sumbasa. I'm surprised he wanted to. Still, today is is a good day for it. Actually, it's not just today. I don't want to go back at all. Are you serious? Drop out of school? That's kind of punk rock. Um, you know, and this is obviously before his death. You know, she's like, I should have listened to him. I never thought. And then you just see her lying in the, the field in her flashback, getting those cracks on her face. And now there's a giant eye ball in the sky, as, as normal. But, you know, it's all a normal, normal dream. And she's clutching that little note that was uh, give, passed to her um, in the first issue. I, I, I've cut that into an individual video, so you can get caught up uh, watching that. Um, and then we got a family member. Hisako, are you going, going to your motorcycle riding class? Can you pick up some eggs on the way home? She's like, sure. Oh, yeah, it's her mom. Okay. And so she's off and... Got some eggs. Good, good, good. And then uh, a girl's coming up to meet her, white-haired girl. Um, she's like, hey, are you the girl from the car wreck? Uh, no, no, you've got the wrong person. She's like, no, I don't think so. I think it's you. Um, I'm May. What's your story? Um, you could tell me. Hey, uh, you know, I got a, I got a little dog thing that sings cool she sings even though she doesn't have any batteries okay cute and then <laughs> she's like man this girl is weird um you know but you know maybe she's weird enough to think i'm not losing my mind so she she shows her a note i'm waiting for you in the science lab the abandoned school come to me So I wonder if that's a new note. That must be a new note, actually, because that wasn't what the note said before. Listen, it's been two days since I read this, so uh, memory is what it is. So yeah, so that that that's definitely something new. And so they're they're going there. Um, this door hasn't been open. School has been closed for years. It's weird. Uh, where are we wait? Where are you waiting for? So so they're going in, and we got eyes in the sky again, as normal, as normal. It's perfectly normal, guys. Normal. And so, yeah, they're they're going through the school. They're checking it out. Um, and you know, Hisaku's like, "You you must think I'm crazy." And May's like, "Are you kidding? You're like a superhero. It's so cool." And she's like, a "Superhero? Not me." And yeah, so they're they're creeping around. They actually step in something squishy. It looks like this soaked like stuffed dog. You know, ew, how can you touch that thing? And then a guard comes up. It's like, you kids can't be here. This property is off limits. What kind of stunt? Is this some kind of stunt? You're making a ghost video? And they come to a room where all there's all these soaking animals, uh, candles. It's all twisted. And May's like, what the? And then you got the shadow saying, hello, Hisaku. Thank you for accepting my invitation and a Again, you know the three boys who bullied Subasa. You won't see them around anymore. I wanted to let you know. I see you brought a friend. She's like, it's him. Sir, he's the killer. Who's a killer? Run! This is normal. Normal day, by the way. Um, I remember when I went to school, this happened every day. It was weird. <laughs> um, yeah, anyways, they're running away. May, what are you? And May appears to have some sort of uh, wind power. She's like, how'd you do that? And But the, the shadow's able to break through, and then we can't stop it. 
And then uh, uh, Hisaku's saying, go. And she's, she's activating the armor thing. Away! Oh, shoot. The eggs from my mom. Oh, the eggs got wiped out. They didn't make it. And you see them getting destroyed. And that's the end of the story. The eggs didn't make it. Uh, 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 Hisaku was grounded for life. Um, we never see her again. No. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we got almost this like shadowy fire over that that building, and then it looks like we we're going to this other building, and then you know this this dude's looking fine, and then he's like, "Why? That girl, I know her face from somewhere, Hisaku." So like, is it not Shadow King? Is it somehow this dude? Or is this dude Shadow King? Is this the physical manifestation of Shadow King in this realm? Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> um, Idori High School entrance ceremony. You know, they're they're standing for the entrance ceremony, and uh, May's like, "Hey, Hisako, I can't believe we're classmates. That's wild. It's good to see you. What's your chat IP? Let's link up our chat ID. Let's link up." I don't use social media. I'll set you up. That's okay, right? Then we can chat. <sighs> I should probably introduce myself properly. It's May Igrashi. God, I'm terrible with names. <laughs> uh, nice to meet you. Um, you know. And then uh, that's pretty much the end of the story. Uh, Hisaku's got a new friend with May, who apparently is a mutant as well. She's got the storm rings on, or uh, earrings on, the lightning bolt ones, and she can manipulate wind. Um, I was about ready to say I don't think she could be Storm, uh, Ultimate Storm, but the fact is we've actually seen Ultimate Storm already in the Black Panther book. Um, oh yeah, there's a little bit at the end of here. You know, oh, a, a top entomological human bottle of the human body. Anatomy of Science Classroom. Yeah, that's that's normal stuff. Um, yeah, that was Ultimate X-Men number two. Oh, and Dean's here. Guys, Dean? Dean Page will be here tomorrow to talk about uh, his uh, current Kickstarter for uh, 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 Jake Sunrise number three and four, and I'm excited to see those books. Um, Ultim uh, Jake Sunrise number two is fan goddamn -tastic. Um... I loved that book. I absolutely recommend checking it out. I can't read, can't wait to read uh, issues three and four. Um, it's fantastic stuff. I cannot recommend it enough. I don't think I have it in the links uh, for this video, but the last live stream, which should still be, well, yeah, it's still up. I'm leaving them up because I can't do Adobe right now. Um, if you go to the last live stream, um, I definitely have uh, the links to his books on there. Go check it out. Yeah, Peach Momoka, uh I don't, I think she's, isn't she Japanese? Or, I think she's Japanese. I'm not sure, though. Um, anyways, um, Ultimate X-Men number two. I don't like this nearly as much as the first one. I think it's good. Um, I think it's solidly good. In my opinion, this is a four-star book. Um, on its own, I don't think this would impress me. Um, but I think it's a fine as a follow-up for the fantastic first issue. Um, I'm, she might be Japanese American. I'm not sure. You know what, guys? Um, let's do some research real fast. Hold on. There's this cool tool called the internet that we can use. Excuse me. I guess we'll pull up her, her wiki here. She has a Marvel page, but there's not much on it. Uh, let's see.
All right, so Peach Momoka is not her real name. Jap but it does say she's a Japanese comic book artist and writer. S signed an exclusive deal um, with Marvel Comics as part of their Stormbreakers program for rising talent in the American comic book industry. She received both the Eisner Award and Ringo Award for Best Cover Artist. The same year she launched Momokaverse, a line of Marvel comics that reimagines the Marvel Universe with blends of Japanese folk tales. That's interesting. Um, uh, she was born in Japan's uh, Satamana Prefecture. Um, yeah, so it seems like she's Japanese. Um, I mean, she might be Japanese-American. She might have moved over. I imagine she lives in America if she's working for Marvel. Um... She was at New York Comic Con. So she was born in, Jap in uh, Japan. That's all I've been able to come up with, really. And I do think she's really talented. I will say that. Um, anyways. Uh, I wasn't actually planning on covering Alex Jones. Um, anyways. Uh, Ultimate X-Men number two. Uh, Four-star book good um i don't know if uh like i like if it's if i won't consider this a great standalone book but as far as like obviously it's a middle chapter i think it does a fine job of uh uh continuing the story set up in the first excellent issue and the next book i had uh is not this that's right last ronin so um Going through and looking for Alan Scott Green Lantern number one, I had to go through a whole bunch of back issues, and the, the I ended up going all over the place, and ended up coming across Last Ronin. Now, this is not an original printing. This is... I, I looked up at first. I was excited because the inner panel said, uh, Last Ronin number one, first printing. I was like, oh, ooh, it is the first printing. And then it said November 2023. I was like, oh, that's not right. So I looked it up, and yeah, this is a reprinting IDW did in getting in preparation for uh, Last Ronin 2, which I already covered. Um, I really enjoyed Last Ronin 2, and Last Ronin's always a book I want to dive into, so, you know, still, fuck it. I was like, Let, let's go ahead and uh, dive in here. Um, there's not really an introduction. Um, I know... Uh, Kevin Eastman and uh, Tom Waltz. I mean, Kevin Eastman, I don't know if he's been super involved with the actual writing of the Turtles books, but he has been writing um, Last Ronin and stuff. Um, I know Peter Laird, I think, sold the rights to, to his part of the Turtles stuff, so it's pretty much been keep Kevin Eastman stuff. Uh, been the guy, primary guy running the, the franchise since then. By the way, uh, apparently right now he's scheduled to be at Cincinnati Comic Expo. Um this year, so I'll probably get to uh, get a chance to meet him. That could be cool. Um, anyways, um, and then you know it just begins now, and you got the the turtle in black, um, cold all the time. Um, forget forget the temperature. The toxicity levels got to be off the charts. You'd have to be crazy to swim in this sludge, maybe. But no bridges, no boats don't leave me much of a choice. Stay behind that bothers you. Hey, where you go, we go. You know that. Yeah, I know. Okay, enough chit-chat. I've heard people say that they're doing a Last Ronin... Oh, let me get this so it's actually... Ooh. I've heard people say they're doing a Last Ronin movie. I haven't seen any official announcement. Um, Now you've got me actually interested. Hold on. Uh, Tyler Burton Smith, who co-wrote the upcoming act movie uh, Boy Kills World, is penning the script for the high body count tale. 
live action R Ray Teen Tune Ninja Turtles movie in the work from producer Walter Mata. After the success of last year's animated hit Teen Tune Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem, Paramount Pictures is keeping Turtle Powers going by putting a new feature project in development. This one, however, will go beyond the realm of all ages of material. The long standing property is known for and instead go for gritty R Ray territory. Uh, Paramount is developing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles' Last Ronin, adapting a popular storyline as seen in recent IDW comics as a live-action feature with the intent of making it for an R rating. Okay, um, I want to stress it's in development, so anything can happen in development. But, that sounds cool. I, I sounds cool. Why does it sound cool? Well, I guess we'll, we'll all have to go over the, uh, the uh, story here. Uh. Anyways, um, last one in part one: Wish for Death. Um, the water is cold, so he's going through that toxic water, just swimming through it. You know, and he's he's got people behind him apparently, but we don't really see. You know, he he's he's going through. He's taking out security cameras. Um, we got now he's climbing a wall. You know. He's got an edge to him. So, you know, he's, he's walking through the streets. Like, and then, crap. You know, he's just in the middle of the street now. Um, what, you expecting a leisurely stroll the whole way or something? And we thought the lower east side was overcrowded before. Doesn't matter. Plan stays the same. I just need to get from here to there. And it looks like he's got other turtles behind him, even though they're not really seeming to be there all the time. And how tough guy, grab a cab, that long ass hump, and a mutant packed head to toe with weapons don't exactly blend in. Um, tell me something a little more obvious. Sides, you know the drill. Adapt and overcome. Eh, good luck with that. Um, and then we got the 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 these uh, kids coming out. Um, check it out, Jones. Some fool jack work, jacked your wheels. Are you freaking kidding me? Who the hell's that stupid? You know, and he, he's stealing the, the ride and getting, go, going back on his mission trying to get to that building. Um, and he's like, there. Um, base of the tower. Uh, that's a long way up, and there's still guards everywhere. Should have stole a glider instead of snake said snake pliskin or a catapult silent but deadly <laughs> not a bad idea except the silent part i need a diversion so he, he's throwing the, the bike in there causing a little explosion you use that explosion to, to ride a bit get get a couple stories up the building then he makes it into the the vent air saying lucky me and then that was graceful worked in it um, check out those cables we hacked in. Um, we might be able to download a map at this level. And so he's working through these cables. Um, yeah, you know, he, he's on a mission. He's on a mission. So now, now he's, he's crawling up. Beep, 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 beep. Um, I don't recall a whole lot of manhole alarms back in the day. Zip it. Halt. Crap. Security lightly armored. Some kind of robocops? Intruder! Roger that. Time for an old trick. You know, and he, he's running away from these guards. Um, he's got another guard. He's got beat up. Um, halt! Whoa. Robo ninja's tougher than he looks. Yeah, and you can see he took him out, and then he, now he's on the ground. Now he's like, let's find out. Crack! And then he's like, halt! But now, now we got like what appears to be like a human eye behind there. Damn broken record. And he takes off the head. And it's like, what the hell? Is that a human inside that armor? Looks like some kind of cyborg. I think more synthetic than human. Yeah. Uh, unit 109 has been disabled. Place is going to be crawling with those things soon. Uh, scanning for suspect. So he, he's sneaking through, and now he, he's, he's got a whole bunch of these robots. He's just... Uh, Going through and, you know, never lose focus. Strike hard, fade away. Halt. 
Uh, suspect locate, residential, da, 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 you know the drill. Um, proceed with caution, you know, and he's taking out more of these guards, and he's like, they are fast. Packing more than swords, too. Uh, close quarters combat is a mistake. Um, he's throwing that one down. To be a true warrior, one must know when to crouch and when to leap. He, he's dodging a train. Need to get to the upper level faster. So he's got to take a uh, of the flying cars up there, apparently. Um, crash. Seriously? And then uh, the, the people behind him, who are just voices, it appears, are telling him smooth move. Classic, you still can't fly 10 feet in a straight line. Ah. Anyways, he, he's, he just keeps on going. He's saying, I'm coming for you. And if you're wondering the backstory, we will get to it. The, the, this book, it, like, if you remember what I covered last one and two, last one and two does a good job going over the backstory. I'd say this one does a better job. We just, we don't know it yet. We don't know it yet. Um, what is it? Arosho Hiratu. Um, you know, he, he seems to be the boss. And he is not happy. He, he, he has the alarms going off. Um, and he's like, okay, yeah, no, uh, this isn't right. Sure, there are troops have live uh, uh, video feeds running at all times. I want this uh, important operation broadcast to the entire city, top to bottom. Pursuit, capture, ooh, excuse me, execution. And then uh, Oroku Hiratu. So-called master of the Foot Clan, Katari's bastard son, and Shredder's grandson. From the day we were born, our father trained my brothers and me to fight in the war between our families for respect, for honor, for revenge. And now, after decades of murder and death, I've had enough. Think you just ran out of miracles, bro. Yep, uh, now you got to figure out how to get back there. We've been in tough spots before, but that's practically impossible. Same as it ever was for us. And I quit believing in miracles a long time ago. And so, uh, he, he's, 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 he needs to figure out how to uh, get to in our car or something like that to get up there. He's like, I better get in our ride and grabs a motorcycle. Charging through, um, um, lots of robots getting killed, getting blown up, um, and now, now he's just got a flood of robots to just beat the shit out of boom um halt uh just just insanity um um more beating up people and the boss is not getting happy uh why am i looking at the terrorist infiltrator inside my lower levels of the tower master i understand your concern but i have to activate every resource available to stop him no i don't think you understand either i have his head on a pike before this day is through and yeah, so uh, our turtle buddy is just going through tearing up these these uh, robots, and the boss is getting more and more tense, um, more and more madness, more and more madness, uh, just destroying more and more of these robots. Um, now, now the the boss is saying activate the stockman tech. Um, And now we got these little itty bitty robots look kind of like the old school mousers back in the day. Flying mousers with lasers. Localized EMP for the little ones. Something more conventional for the big one. So he's got, he's got an EMP for the little ones that he's going to uh, just fight for the big one. And then wait, no, our momentum too fast. And then he's out the window. Hello, Shane. Yeah, no, uh, well, I, I was just looking into that, yes. Um, Hollywood Reporter had a story about it. Um, it's in development stages, so I always want to stay in pre-production is when most movies die. That being said, I think it would be awesome if they did our last Ronin movie. I guess spoiler from what I thought this comic book. Um, anyways, you know, they're, they're falling out the window, um, collapsing down, falling, falling... 
and boom, he hits the ground. Not as planned. He's coughing up blood. Um, he's like, everything feels broken, but I'm somehow still alive. And the, the robot guards are saying, disperse, and then I won't let them finish me this way. I won't dishonor my family. Not anymore. And uh, the robots are saying, lethal force authorized. Dude, you're looking, you're looking not for not dead. Took off that way. And then they're going after him. I'm going to check it out. Holy hell. This guy's bleeding out big time. So she led him the wrong way, and now she's actually following a trail of blood. Uh, I'm pretty sure they are not Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I'm pretty sure they're just Mutant Turtles at this point. Well, Mutant Turtle. I mean, Last Ronin, this was a really uh, popular book when it came out. So it would make sense if... I mean, this conceivably could be the most popular Turtles comic ever. I don't... Maybe the originals, but that's about it. But anyways, we got we got this guy, um, the, the the big bad guy, Shredder's grandson. His petty desire for revenge crushed along with his abominable body. A foregone conclusion, of course. The foolish beast actually believed he could destroy me and settle some archaic family feud. Me, ha! The horrid imbecile never had a chance. Which does beg the obvious question. If vengeance was a was the why of the creature's clumsy assault. What then was the how? As in, how the hell was he even al alive to commence such idiocy? I wiped those dreadful things from the face of the earth a decade ago. It does make one wonder. No matter, you need not worry. As always, I have all under control. Nothing will ever threaten my ironclad rule of this empire I, forge, I have forged. And you'll always be here to share in my glory and witness it all I could do. So he's got somebody in... Oh, it's his mother. Um, in stasis. And then uh, they're letting him know, hey, the terrorist made it out. He, he's on loose. He's stumbling. He's not doing great. He's coughed up a lot of blood. He's not doing great. So he, you, you, you see his weapons. He's got a bow. He's got a broken sword. He's got nunchucks. He's got sigh and a lot of coughing up blood. Laying him down before, we were all so different, so much alike. I miss my brother so much, and I miss my father. More than anything else, I wanted to make him proud. In the end, too little, too late. Story of my life. I'm sorry, father, I failed. Please forgive me. So he's, he's, he's doing a seppuku. Um, too much blood, never lose focus. <sighs> And then that, that girl goes like, what the hell? No, not yet. Not like this. Holy crap, it's a, no way. You're, you're a mutant turtle. And then we get the, the, uh, uh, what is that called? The, the thing, the, the beep, beep. You know, you need flatline. You I don't remember what's that called. That's a, there's a term for that. Anyways, you guys don't wake him up so soon. I mean the last bagel. Hey, Sleeping Beauty, wake up. We got things to do. Oh, man, who smashed a cement truck into my skull? More like a fleet of cement trucks. Yeah, we've seen prettier things pulled out of the East R River in spring. Whatever, where are we, got? Where are we, anyways? Duh, welcome home. Home, what do you mean? Hold up. Is this the old sewer lair? What, you expecting the Ritz or something, Twinkle Toes? And who said you could use my favorite blanket? How the hell did we... You're... Thank God you're up. Oh my god! April, is that really you? Yes, it's me. I'm so relieved to see you awake. You really had me worried, mister. But who were you just talking to, Michelangelo? So yeah, if you didn't know, I just uh, did, told you, you know, the, the, the last Ronin is Michelangelo. Um, the other turtles are dead. We don't know the full details behind it. I definitely want to see if I can pick up uh, either reprintings or maybe I can find the originals of the, the last four issues of this and dive into this. Um, this thing, uh, th this is a five-issue limited series that took them like two years to release, so I probably have some time before Last Ronin Issue 2 comes out, or Last Ronin 2 Issue 2 comes out. Um, so I could probably get a lot of these done before then. Um, but yeah, uh, like I said, I really like Last Ronin Issue 2, the Last Ronin 2 Issue 1. I thought that was really good. This is better. 
this is just like an insane story but like rather than like bog you down with exposition because there's plenty of exposition here they're going to just init throw you in with like a, a, a essentially you know a turtle going on a revenge mission killing a whole bunch of robots and kind of drop the story throughout it's really well done um it's a really cool little story um i am torn you see i you know yeah i think i'm giving it four and a half um i kind of want to give it five but it's more for cultural impact than anything um as far as an actual issue i don't know if it's a quite a five star book but it's really fucking good and it's really creative and it had a hell of a cultural impact um i liked it quite a bit the artwork was very good i i did i didn't even go through the town um where's the town page hold on yeah, I was right there at the beginning, and I don't think I read through it. Um, talent on this book. We got story by Kevin Eastman, Peter Laird, and Tom Waltz. Script by Tom Waltz and Kevin Eastman. Uh, layouts by Kevin Eastman. Pencils and inks by Isu and Isaac Escorts, Escorza. Um, page 39, art by Ben Bishop. I didn't know somebody else did art for page 39. It looks seamless. Um, yeah, excellent book. Excellent book. Um... I hope to pick up the other issues and, and finish the story. Anyways, um, what next issue? God, I keep on looking up stuff in between. Oh, yes. Um, so, yeah, we're at the, the poll winners. Hold on. Let me dig those up real fast. So, I asked you guys what Marvel and DC book I will be covering in... Uh, What Marvel and DC books to cover? Cover today. And. Oh, actually, this might look better for this. Oh, yeah, that lines up nicely. Okay, so um, for the Marvel book, it was Fall of the House of X by almost. Yeah, no, it got more than twice as much votes as anything else. And. Uh, for DC, we got Alan Scott Green Lantern number one. Um, well, I, I got a whole bunch of comic books. I did not pick up a copy of Ultimate Black Panther number two, but it wasn't uh, it didn't win, so uh, we we will hold off on that. I do want to cover that sometime in the future, though. Um, I am thinking I picked up enough issues of comic books. I may not go to a comic book store this week and just to ask you guys what to cover of uh, what I have left because I I still want to read Black Widow and Hawkeye at some point. Wolverine 41 looks awesome. I also picked up Resurrection of Magneto number 4, and that'd be great to follow up on. I got some more issues of Alan Scott Green Lantern, and I got Wonder Woman to read. Um, this is not the continuation of Wonder Woman number 6, which is why I was kind of held off on it. Um, I believe this is something they did, uh, I believe, for Women's History Month? Something like that? I think that's why they did something different for number 7. I don't know. Maybe when I read it, it'll become clear. But yes, um, those were the books I picked up. And yeah, Fall of the House of X. I thought I picked up a higher res copy of my cover. Um, but the, the, yeah, this is... No, it looks all right on the little screen for uh, 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 OBS. But like, yeah, it doesn't look right, actually. But anyways, the actual book looks better. Don't worry. <laughs> and we got Juggernaut. It said nothing can stop the gut Juggernaut. But that's not true, especially when a harpoon made of discarded adamantium skeleton of Weapon X maims you. Um, the mutants had been losing since the Hellfire ga Gala. Many were dead. The rest were scattered. An insurrection insurrectionist team of X-Men were leading the rebellion against Orcus. The battle to liberate Earth was underway. Um, and it could be going better. Krakoa, the living island, was surrounded by enemies. Mutantum was on the cusp of losing everything. The humans and Orcus were feeling confident, flying around in repurposed shield equipment. Uh, the meat puppets had no idea they'd already been sold out by the artificial intelligence in their organization. Um, and yeah, uh, now we got Orcus shooting down Juggernaut um, as he tries to protect Krakoa. He's like, you can't kill me, right? 
uh, how about your friend? And they start blasting away at Kokoa um, and jugging around. It's like, oh, shit. Um, and he starts fucking up people. It's nice to see Juggernaut doing some good. Uh, yeah, this is uh, the fall of the House of X number three. Um, and then at this moment, we got Cyclops making a run for it with that one Dr. Doctor, uh, Dr. Grigor, I want to say. Uh, I'm pretty sure they'll over name fairly soon. At that moment, half world away, Cyclops was finally escaping the clutches of Orcus with the head Dr. Alia Gregor. Yeah, just look. Um, and then, you know, he, he's saying we gotta press ahead. Um, you know, I believe Krakoa, Krakoa, I believe in Krakoa, but feeling in my gut says we're all in jeopardy. I trust the, the defense of Krakoa to, to my fellow mutants. And she's like, how can you see? I thought you were blind about your quotes visor. Yeah, you can see he doesn't, like, they have uh, this special visor just to block his powers. He's like, yeah, I, I memorize this place. Um, I, I have a pretty good idea. And then she's like, wait, you mean you could have freed yourself at any time? He's like, yeah. She's like, why didn't you? And yeah, obviously he was trying to play safe by the rules and it, it's not going. He's like, I, I was waiting for you. And you have almost everything. And you and I have almost everything in common. May I ask you a question, Dr. Gregor? Who really controls Orcus? And she's like, I thought it was me, but uh, uh, it doesn't matter. We're trapped. And now we got magic popping to help out. Um, hey, psych, I brought Ruby Quartz Visor. Um, you know, hey. Um, cool. And I've been listening to the inner workings of Orcus for a long time. The human parts... Of the force came gloating, they threatened and tortured me. Um, the AI was too quiet. I expect it didn't want us thinking about it. Dr. Gregor shares my concern. I know we're in a tough spot, but uh, can the others save Krakow without me? If it needs doing, then it will be done. And here we go. We get the, the summary. All the X-Men books have little stuff like this, which is probably good, because uh, X-Men books are steeped in mythology lots of times. Um... Anyways, this book's written by Jerry uh, Jerry Dugan, Lucas Wernick, and Jethro Morales uh, are the artists, and Brian Valnez is the color artist. Okay. When mutant kind emerged from years of oppression and bigotry by founding Krakoa, their own sovereign nation, humans were scared. Most notably, secret anti-mutant, most notably, secret anti-mutant organization Orcus has now publicly declared their intention to wipe all mutants off the face of the earth forever. Of course, the humans in that organization have no idea the artificial intelligence that work for them have also been biding their time. Stark Sentinels have been deployed around the world to carry out Orcus, dec decree as the war for mutants' existence rages on. Uh, Wolverine, Nightcrawler, and Colossus launched an unsuccessful assassination and rescue mission on the Orcus space station that resulted in the dot resulted in Dr. Stasis slipping through their fingers and their double agent Firestar going missing. But with Polaris... Uh, Pol uh, I've been reading too much. With Polaris's help, they were able to cripple the station and deal a blow to Orcus's resources. Meanwhile, Juggernaut tries to... continues to try to protect the physical manifestation of Krakoa from Orcus's forces. His would-be rescuers, Rogue and Gambit, having gone off mission to retrieve an ally previously hidden by destiny. Elsewhere, Cyclops was saved from execution by a most unsuspected uh, ally, Dr. Alia Gregor, one of Orcus's top scientists. And yeah, this one threw me for a loop. So apparently Apocalypse is now working with the mutants and helping the X-Men. It's been a while since I've read comic books. I wasn't expecting that one, though. Um... Tea is good. I love tea. Um, and now that Earth's mutants have raised their banners, a united and reforged Arcoa uh, will join our cousins. Who will join me? So we got uh, a whole bunch of mutants signing up with Apocalypse, and then boom, and then this ship pops up. Uh, mutants of Akora and Krakoa, I am manifold. Though I loathe war, it is upon us. No one will command that you board the sword station behind me, but evil must be confronted. Know that if you join me, it may be the last thing you do. Hiya, sugars. 
we're a little pressed for time, so if you all will get on board strapping and put your trays and tables up, let's go save Krakoa. So yeah, obviously that's Rogue flying through, and then we got we got Manifold portaling this ship back and forth. And now they're 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 portaled up here, uh, doing battle in our space station. It looks like. Um, so we got a whole bunch of mutants charging in. Um, yeah, no holds barred. Um, who told her that there would be a day like this? She heard destiny clear as day, as though they were in the same room. So much death and destruction, it all culminates with giant X in the heavens for the fall of Krakoans. I see kings classing in black after the death of the Red Queen. I see a Je Jehovah bolt from the heavens. I see the stars ripped in half. I hear the poisoning lies off the false captain. Uh, his rank earned. The fools who speaks the truth will pay the price. It is enough. That is true. And then we're back to uh, Juggernaut and Krakoa under a lot of heavy fire. Um, and then unfortunately we got another ship uh, coming in. Um... Like, oh my god, sorry to interrupt, Emma. I just received a message you need to see, forwarding it to the Thunderbird now. This is Firestar. If you're seeing this recording, I'm probably dead. Dr. Stasis realized I've been an X-Man all along after I helped set Iron Man's trap for the majority of Stark's Sentinels. I placed a tracker on the Maniac, punched, punched his ticket for me. You're routing us now. Bring her home. Avenge her if you can. not uh, Thank you, Anthony. So Iron Man's helped him out. Um, Firestar, who was undercover of Doctor Stasis, is uh, not in a great place, and so they're they're gonna try to save her. And then we got uh, Doctor Stasis running away. You're not going anywhere, Stasis. Oh my! It's the porcelain trumpet and her lunatic ninja, Catherine. With pleasure. You better pray that Firestar's alive and uh, Shadow Cat's going at him, or you'll beg for death. Unhand me! If you so much as lay a finger on me, you'll never see Firestar alive again. I've hidden her away as insurance against this exact scenario. I have the finest side blocker implanted in my head, and... Oh, you don't mean the side blocker I just faced from your head when I knocked your helmet off, Emma? Uh, w wait. And then, so... Yeah. He was wearing a side blocker, so Emma couldn't get in his head, and Shadowcat just yanked it out. And you can see here. That's what that sh scene's all about right there. Um, and then we got an arm mutant. Um, I don't know. His, I'm bad. Um, I think his name comes up. Um, but yeah, he's, he, they got Firestar's location. He, he's going in to get her. Um, Firestar, welcome back, Firestar. Breathe easy. I got you. And then it's like, we're good. Oh yeah. Sync must be the name of that other mutant. There we go. And then, uh, I've tried so hard to be good so long, but you men broke me. You wouldn't let me be nice. I've destroyed men worth ten of you, a hundred of you. You hurt us, you hurt me. I could kill you where you grovel, but I won't. Oh, thank you, thank you. Instead, I'll reach into your disgusting mind and pull forth your nightmares, your worst, most unhinged fears about mutants born in your voluminous, bigoted mind. And I promise you, it will feel very real. And it only took a minute for Dr. Stasis' heart to begin to arrest. Of course, time is relative, and Emma was a skilled telepath. She made the final minute feel like ten years. And then, please, I have a wife and family. Let me speak with Cyclops, who'll grant me mercy. I'm afraid he might, but he's not here, and I am. If you're anything like the mutant sinister, you might be thinking returning is a good idea, and it's not to stay dead. Or the next time I kill you, it'll be so much worse. Boom. Emma finishes him off. And then they launch off, uh, kind of setting his body ablaze. Or no, no, they don't launch off. That's, uh, that's Firestar setting his fire ablaze. Oops, body ablaze. Ah, which is good. Thank you, we were just discussing tidying up the corpse. Um, whatever kind of peace we win in the end, it'll be because you were such a great X-Man, Angelica. And you did us all proud and prayed the hero's price. And then we catch up with Cyclops, uh, Dr. Gregor, and uh, Magic. 
And Madge is like, you sure you want me to leave you two here alone? It's like, I need to do this. Tell Emma, keep an ear out. Roger, I'm being asked to help hunt for Director Devo. And then this was my family's home. What the hell was Nimrod doing here? Have you heard the name Sentinel City? After our victory over Krakoa's, your habitat on uh, the moon was repurposed um, into a relay station with our Volusian mining settlement, except almost none of the ore made it back to Earth. It was used on site. Used for what? I don't know. And then we, we come across Nimrod. Emma, heads up. Be ready. It's a surprise to me, Dr. Gregor, but you've managed the, that feat three times. I didn't think I'd see you again. Why the secrets for me of all people? Using mining operation at Sentinel City, almost none of the, the metal makes it to Earth. Why are you building out there? In the future and the end. Dr. Gregor, that thing is not your husband. Yes, that's true. But Nimrod only exists because of he, my husband's sacrifice. I know that he can calculate the truth of it. Dr. Gregor, I choose not to lie to you. And then boom, Nimrod just kills her. Not a big deal, you know. Yeah, I don't think that's her husband. So I'm giving you the gift, this gift earlier than I calculated. And then Cyclops just blasts away at uh, Nimrod, which makes sense. We calculated that uh, we'd have the greatest chances of success if mutants and humans were at each other's throats. Uh, you would not look up to notice the sword over your head. Sentinel City is not any outpost or mine. It's a tool to sterilize this hellish planet once and for all. Uh, so yeah, so Sentinels have decided, you know, humans and mutants are a bit too much, so we're just going to wipe them all out. And then we got some classic quotes. Orcus is the tip of the spear in the defense of mankind, Director Devo. Um, Orcus is how will I have my revenge. Orcus is how I will have my f revenge. Uh, Philon? Orcus is simply a ladder for me to ascend, Dr. Stat Stasis. Orcus is just another playground, Modoc. Orcus is something I've not tried before, Moria X. Orcus is a shining babble that was flashed in front of flashy eyes. It was used to inject simple ideas into small minds across Earth. Man and mutant killed each other, and almost none of them look at our larger equation. Oh yeah, and then we just got the, the books around when this came out. This came out almost a month ago today. Wow, I am behind. Um, well, maybe if I do more live streams, I will get uh, more books in. Yeah. Um, I already covered Resurrection of Magneto. Um, that came out after this. Um, yes. Anyways, um, yeah, this was a solid book. I want to say this is a four-star book. It's entertaining. It's a lot of X-Men lore um, getting thrown at you, as all the Fall, Fall of the House of X books have been. But they're entertaining. I've been enjoying it. It's good seeing uh, it kind of uh, the big crossover and how all this is playing out. Cyclops has been the perpetual badass. We didn't get caught up with the, the Wolverine, Nightcrawler, and Colossus story, where they've been uh, pretty much causing chaos throughout the ships uh, in the past two issues. Um, I'm sure he'll play a role later. Um, but yes, um, yeah, four-star book. Very good. Um, now down for our last book before we, we possibly look at some chuttery. Uh, Alan Scott, Green Lantern number one. This is a book that I have been actually wanting to track down ever since there was a... Uh, I think they had like the beginning segment of this in one of those Wonder Woman books I read. Um, and I thought, God, this looks like an interesting book. Um, Alan Scott, if you remember, he is the original Green Lantern before uh, Hal Jordan. Um, essentially, I think his he had a power ring, but it wasn't like part of the Lantern Corps or anything. Then they did the reboot with Hal Jordan where they introduced the Lantern Corps. And then Alan Scott was kind of retroactively made part of that, I believe. Um, but yeah, this is supposed to be the one of the early stories of Alan Scott, um, the first Green Lantern. So we open up, and it's just immediately a, a newspaper headline. The Green Lantern does it again. Um, and we get the whole newspaper story, uh, and it's mixed in with the credits. Uh, DC Comics proudly presents Into the Fire, 
Uh, Tim Sheridan writes, uh, Sian T Tormey is the artist, Matt Hermes, or Matt Herms, uh, is the colorist. Um, I'm not really sure they captured the moment. Yeah, that photograph does kind of suck. Um, but anyways, FBI headquarters, um, you know, who, who, who knew you could get the bulletin in D.C.? Um, in this job, it's pretty much whatever I want. Um, now once again, can you tell me what the what's missing in that photograph and these i'll give you a hint the initials are jsa so uh uh the director of the fbi here wants him to to work with the jsa more um he does too much on his own um he's like i agreed to let you put my name on the mast on the masthead yes but as your questionably obtained photos show i work better alone is that in fact this could have been a phone call, Director Hoover. Why am I here? Because I wanted you to know that I know that you have friends. I told you I work alone. I'm not talking about super friends. Scott. Scott, who's that? Please, we're better at this than you are. We have photos, sworn affidavits from some personal acquaintances, plus a classified file from your army days. Project Crimson, was it? Full of redactions, but the hospital records completed the portrait. The journal they retrieved was wildly helpful. You can have it back, by the by the way. I made copies. Now you and I are the only ones who have seen this particular file, and I'm willing to keep it that way. In return for some cooperation, the JSA is important to me, Alan, to the whole country. The next time I, I open the paper and read about some new... Uh, uh, daring do the whole team better be smiling back at me as you can see i'm a real believer in photographic evidence then he, he looks bugged out i told you i get what i want oh and also we're having a little get together in the forest hills this weekend you'll come clyde will give you the details on your way out and alan bring the combat boots they still fit and then it's it's photos of him with another man california 1936 um, you know, uh, what they got, they got, uh, yeah, so, the, so, yeah, they, they got a camera. Give me that camera. Never. You can't resist me. Johnny might hear some, might hear, um, you know, and, you know, it's just two guys, two guys who obviously love each other. And then, uh, and then we, Alan's, Alan's obviously got some reservations. I'm sorry. It's just this. Johnny, it's a sin. Why? Because we're not married? I'd marry you right now if they'd let us. You'll have to take the name, though, because Johnny Scott sounds like a brand of toilet cleanser. Um, and then, if God himself didn't want me to love you, then how could I? Um, you know, the, the, you know. obviously they, they love each other quite a bit. Um... It's actually fairly sweet, and it's a time where this type of thing is absolutely unacceptable. It's like, sinner or not, I was in love for the first time, and I was so confused. Not about who we were to each other, but to the rest of the world. The fact is, in 1936, we weren't safe, especially considering where we'd be work living and working for the next few months. I joined the Army Corps of Engineers to build railroads and levees, but with all the rumblings about the new German leader... Me, Johnny, and a few other sappers were engaged in top-secret project with a goal that was fantastical, to say the least. Uh. I mean, okay, uh, I'm talking. I'm just seeing your, your, your uh, chat. Um... Nelson Peltz has become a joke and humiliated by Disney shareholders. I'd love to see you react to Campy's vicious takedown of this racism, sexist moron. Um, yeah, we could look at it. If it's not too long, I won't mind checking that out. That could be fun. Um, uh, yeah, so they're looking on this thing called the Crimson uh, uh, Flame. It sounds like something out of a Pulp Digest radio. Um, imagine the kind of power it takes to make fire burn for centuries underwater. If it's out there, it can be harnessed by good old Uncle Sam, then any war we'd ever need to fight will be over. So he's working on this high-tech high, high tech, uh, experimental thing. 
Um, we can't for sure say say the thing exists, but if it does, that unit, that Johnny, that the corporal and I have built will contain it, guaranteed. So yeah, um, he's working on a top secret project. Um, the whole mission was wildly ambitious, and at that moment, the army loved ambition. We made sure to temper expectations. We were, after all, on the hunt for what was essentially a child's bedtime story. But for some reason, I was totally confident we'd find it. They'd brand us heroes. As long as they didn't find out what we really were, how we spent our nights, him and me, the plans we were making, the ones we shared, and the ones we were too afraid to tell each other. Um, yeah, P P Pista brings up a good point. I don't get why Hal Jordan is the main one still. Alan Scott was the first. John Stewart, Kyle Rayner were active ones 20 years ago. But now we never see... But And now we have uh, new characters, Jessica Root, Cruz, and Joe uh, Million. I do think it's interesting. Um, well, DC, back when I actually first started reading, when I started reading DC, it was Kyle Rayner was Green Lantern. But at that point, it was never established that Hal Jordan was the main one. At that point, it was just like Alan Scott was Green Lantern, then Hal Jordan was Green Lantern, then Kyle Rayner was Green Lantern. And that was kind of actually an interesting thing with DC. Uh, the Flash was kind of the same way because you had Jay Garrick, you had uh, 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 Barry Allen, and then you had Wally West. Um, essentially, it was just this line of people who were taking on the mantle. But... Um, None of them were considered the main one. They were all just, you know, they would have their run and then go back. And then eventually DC decided to just go ahead and go back and kind of make the most popular ones the main one. And it feels kind of like a waste of possibilities. Um, I like the idea of just maybe just having characters who are legacy and they just pass, like, the mantle on as they go. Um, and DC could have done that, but then they just decided to... to uh, well, especially with Green Lantern and Flash, just go ahead and, and fall back and say Hal Jordan and Barry Allen are the, the ones. Um, but yeah, I kind of like the idea of just, like, legacy. Like, you know, they run it for, like, 20 years, and then, yeah. Yeah, and they are just rip-off characters. Uh, Alan Scott is the only Green Lantern. Well, the other ones are rip-offs. I'm just saying. Just saying. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, where were we at? Um... As long as they didn't find out what we were, were, what we really were, how we spent our nights, him and me, the plans we were making, the ones we shared, the ones we were too afraid to tell each other. Things happened fast with us. Johnny Ladd was assigned to Crimson when we were six months deep, a brilliant creative mind. He was indispensable to the team inside a day, to me even faster. I don't know, maybe too fast. What the hell are you doing? We've got to be more careful. I mean, God, Johnny, if someone saw us, Alan, shut up. I was so busy being an idiot, I forgot why we were on the boat uh, in the first place. But there we were, less than a week out, and we'd already found Crimson Flame. Or rather, the damn thing found us. And then, uh, New York City, 1941. So we're jumping between, it's 36, we're jumping between 31 and uh, 36, 41 and 36. So 36 is the story with him and Johnny. Then 41 is the J. Edgar Hoover stuff where he, he has to work with the JSA more. But anyways, um, hold up. Not this Crimson Flame crap ain't thrilling me to no end, but just go back. You saying J. Edgar Hoover? Um, so he's telling the story to this guy. Yes, again, yes, Derby and Hoover. I, I really like Hal Jordan and uh, uh, Barry Allen. That being said, yes, I do have a special connection to uh, uh, Wally West and uh, Kyle Rayner because they had the identity when I was reading DC and I was a teenager. So those are the ones I have the, the, the closest connection to. And now I never, ever get to read about them because um, they were just like the thirds. Um, a little sad, but it is what it is. And I will say, like, I haven't given my, my full... I'm just going over the book right now, but uh, I did really enjoy this Alan Scott comic book that Tim Sheridan did. Um, really a cool idea to go back. And yeah, I mean, yeah, obviously he, we're retconning the character a bit, but it's an interesting story going over what it would be like to have this type of relationship 
you know, back in a time where this type of relationship isn't acceptable. Um, you know, and he's like Justice Society, and that's not all he wants, but it's enough. Um, so what? Who cares? You spend a day with Dr. Helmet, the big ghost guy, Z and Zippy the fastball, or what have you, and bingo, bango, the feds off your case. I say do it. You know I can't, on the account of who you fool around with. Dad ain't want none of their business. You're a hero. Maybe in the light, but after dark, the world, it's the laws. Being what they are, hard truth is I'm a criminal. You know, so he really, like, he's really being affected by the society he lives in, frankly. And he he looks down on himself for what he, he did with Johnny, which is a real thing that people suffer through. And it's, it's, it's awful. Um, yeah, um... But yeah, um, uh, woohoo, hey, I don't judge yous, but I don't need details on what y'all doing with your flonies, and neither does the JSA. The last time I got on a team, people got hurt, and it was my fault. The best thing I could do for the JSA, for the Green Lantern, is to keep a healthy distance. Hell, how come you don't, how do you hurt guys with the tin helmets and wings, and that other one, um, the one, he got his accent throwing me off. The one with the fancy coat, the gas mask, Sandra. And then uh, we got sirens going off. Radio. On it, boss. You want I should call the JSA, too? I'm sure they've gotten word. So he's got his Green Lantern ring. He's turning the Green Lantern off to save the day. And then we're jumping back to 1936. It's hard to say what I was doing on that ship for, any, for anyone's good, but my own. Uh, mine and Johnny's. The idea was to write the ticket out of the army to them. The Crimson Flame was a valuable weapon to me. It was a doctoral uh, fellowship and a book or three. Just enough to keep the lights on as we tucked ourselves away in the middle of some blissful nowhere. A future. Corporal, where have you been? Um, sorry, it's, you dropped it. Oh God, Johnny, I didn't mean to, you know, I, you know, I know you didn't and it's okay. Now I want you to do something impossible. I do. Um, look, sharp men. We may only get one shot at this. Corporal, light up. Um, and suddenly this ludicrous thing that I dreamed up on a train from Gotham to D.C. and spent the better part of two years perfecting hummed to life. The bulkheads opened to give me a plasma flame that we thought it wanted a vessel, a protective enclosure to carry it safely from the darkest depths back at light. Uh, it's working. Well, we thought we... It wanted. We'd always playfully attributed a kind of intelligence to Crimson Flame. It was the sort of thing you do when you're working long hours trying to stay sane. We did it. You did it, Alan. You're the hero. But it turned out it was intelligent. And now, fuck. It was angry. And so, yeah, now we got this Crimson Flame jumping around. Somebody help! Lieutenant! Now we're jumping in 1941. Lieutenant, good, you're back. I was only gone for a couple hours. I didn't think anyone would notice. What's the situation? Hours? Never mind. The hostages are safe. Free, thanks to you. But we've got a few uh, loose ends tying up. First, where's the suspect? The suspect? Yeah, listen, the boys in blue really do appreciate your help. But without a suspect, we can't exactly close out the file. Now, where'd you take him? Me? I didn't take him. I just got here, Lieutenant. Um, I got a witness that says he grabbed the guy and headed for the pier obviously mistaken it's hard to mistake you also the loon with the gun was only wearing shorts and combat boots so it's pretty recognizable there too did you say oh my god it's coming straight for us run and now we're jumping back to 1936 hang on i've got you who's got you alley-oop my johnny at this point the demonic flame creature or whatever it was had made it very clear it wanted us dead and our response was a resounding hell no but wasn't over yet. Not even close. Evacuate the building now. We can't move that fast. So we got Flash darting around 1941. We got this this de uh, uh, demonic flame, uh, living flame in 1936. The ship's lost. We can just salvage uh, the pod and get to Iraq before it's too late. No, I've got a better idea. Of course, I had no idea if it would work. Um, but I better sure hell. But but I sure as hell had to try. He did it. The Green Lantern saved us. Go, Greeny. I wish he'd put a ring on my finger. Because sometimes you get lucky. 
and yeah, now, now, now the, they're, 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 they're kind of recovering from the ship. Things seem to be quieting down. Everybody, hold on. That's my job. Of course, there was, uh, there always is if you take the time out to work it out. I'm an engineer, not a hero. There's so much I might have worked out if I'd remembered that. It just happened so fast, and honestly, whoo, hot diggity dog. You're lucky it worked out, hero. If we'd lost both you and the flame, we haven't lost anything yet, Corporal. I didn't want to let him down. It's still out there. It's still out there. But it's true what they say. Play with fire, and we're still close enough to try and whoosh. Expect to get burned, and it's got Johnny. And then back to 1941. So yes, Lantern, it's good to see you. I thought maybe you'd quit the team. Where's the gunman? Where do you... The roof. Sometimes you get lucky. You sure about that? Of course I'm sure. The froth from the mouth and the nostrils, I'm not an expert, but I think this man drowned. Other times, drowned? The luck just runs out. And those look like second-degree burns on his arms. And how do you drown and burn at the same time? Lantern? Lantern, you okay? I just, I hadn't really looked at his face till now. It leaves the door open to a moment you should have known was chasing you your whole life. I know this man. I can see him every time I close my eyes. I see the two of us in a heartbeat, choking on the silence, drowning, burning, somehow together. A part of me now, of us. Like the ring that brought us together. The flame is what tore us apart. I can still hear the words. The tortured voice of the stranger, I swear I heard him in my life, disappeared into the deep end of the dark. First we bring death. Every time I close my eyes, I feel that booming, rasping, maddening sound. That's why I'm here. Next, conversion. Happy ending. No, this is getting fucking dark. Um, so yeah, now it looks like he's, he's strapping him for conversion therapy. Don't know the full context, but like obviously... I'm getting the impression, like, memories, like, as we're going through back and forth, I don't think it's just the audience jumping back and forth. I get the, the sense that this is also his perspective going back and forth. Uh, obviously, we're getting some mixture where it seems like he's, he's pulling Johnny's body from the water, or at least someone who was a victim. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be Johnny, but maybe, yeah. It's, uh... Things are not going well for him. But this is an excellent fucking book. I would say this is our four and a half star book. Um, fantastic, fantastic story so far. And if you want more, because I had trouble tracking this down, uh, when I found it, I just went ahead and bought the first three. So I've got half the series already, so we can cover the rest of them in a uh, future time. But yeah, this is uh, excellent art. Um, excellent story. Yeah, all three, all three, all four books I thought were really good this week. With, uh, uh, uh in my opinion, Last Ronin and, uh, Green Lantern here being the standouts. Which is unusual. Uh, as someone who's a Marvel fan, this week, uh, the Marvel books, while good, were not as good as the DC and IDW book. Um, but yeah. Of course, the IDW book was Last Ronin 1, which is a famous fucking comic book, so that's tough to compete. But... Alan Scott Green Lantern was fantastic as well. Highly recommend it. Really fucking good book. Um, you know, just a guy who, who's, who like, he's letting society kind of dictate whether or not he's good or bad just because he's obviously gay. And, I mean, it's one of those things where if you, if you like, you, you hear horror stories about guys doing this type of thing to themselves. Um, you know, it seems like now he's hooking himself to conversion therapy. Now, is he doing this to himself, or is, is this something Hoover is forcing him to do? Um, we don't know the full context. I'm sure we'll, we'll dive in later, but fucking great fucking story. Highly recommend it. All right, so, uh, next, I was thinking about just diving into an EFAP, because, you know, EFAP's always very considerate. Maybe we could jump around in the video look at different clips that could be fun but to talk you brought up looking at john campy and the nelson putt uh yeah you know nelson uh, putts thing so maybe we will dive into that a bit here hold on
Oh, okay. Um, I'm assuming, Taki, it is Disney defeats activist investor Nelson Putz. Oh, let me make sure sound's on. In case you've been under rock, there is a battle going on for control of the board at Disney. There's an annual Disney shareholders meeting going on, and you have investor Nelson Peltz, who runs the Train company. It's, a, it's called Train. That's the name of the organization. Now, Train, 72% of Train is owned by Ike Perlmutter. <laughs> oh, God. It's like whenever Peltz comes around, if Princess Leah sees Ike, she's like, Ike Perlmutter, I could smell your stench. When I came on board, I was wondering who was holding on to Peltz's leech. Uh, so these two guys. Charming. Yeah, charming to the last. To the last. I. Th yeah, John Campia, just to give you a little context to, to my history, he is a guy I don't I don't uh, agree with 100% lots of times, but there are times where I agree with him 100%. Um, he's not like the normal grifter or chud i cover whatsoever he is just a movie guy um who frequently has different opinions than me but like there's nothing uh wrong with him and he definitely is anti-chud so that is good for him they've been trying to fight and get control of the board get a In fact he's the example like our, uh, all the all the the all of my detractors always say that i just uh, call everybody i disagree with a bigot john campy is someone i disagree with frequently uh, he's not a bigot seats on the board and there's been a big battle going on about who's going to get them and all that kind of stuff now according to the international news organization reuters they're saying the battle pretty much done this comes to us from them who said they said the following uh walt disney co has secured has secured enough shareholder votes to defeat the challenge against its board mounted by nelson peltz's hedge fund train fund management uh, people familiar with the matter said on tuesday Enough votes had been cast on Tuesday evening to put Disney's board of directors safely ahead of Train's two challengers, Peltz and former Disney chief financial officer Jay Rousseau, the source said. So what happened the other day was, you know, you've had a bunch of people coming out and supporting one or the other. Coming out in support of Bob Iger and Disney has been the largest single shareholder, individual shareholder, George Lucas, came out in support. The Disney family came out and supported a lot of that kind of stuff. But it was still within a margin of error. But then yesterday, the single biggest shareholder of Disney, company-wise, Vanguard, threw their support behind Bob Iger and Disney. And now the news organization says that that pretty much does it. it, it that puts them in the lead. They're going to win this thing. <laughs> I love that picture. Uh, there goes Ike Perlmutter. Ike Perlmutter, who, by the way, once famously said that... Uh, when they were replacing the actors to play... I mean, you're right, Pink Bunny Zero, and part of that is the issue. Like, Disney has, like, a ridiculous amount of market when it comes to studio movies. It's like 40% of the market or something like that after the Fox acquisition. It's insane. Um, as much as much as I wanted Marvel to get the rights to X-Men back, um, I did not think that Fox acquisition should have gone through. It gave them way too much power, and they were already powerful as fuck. To play Rhodey, and they were going to get Don Cheadle, and they were pitching Don Cheadle. said, I don't care if it's Don Cheadle. Just get me a black actor. The audience can't tell the difference. <laughs> that's, that's the guy who's been trying to get control of Disney. And vehemently, this is what's kind of the final straw, was fighting against, I and mean, he was the CEO of Marvel, and tried and kept holding back a Black Panther movie, saying audiences don't want to see movies with black people. They don't want to see them. Can't work. Two films and two point one billion dollars later, he's choking on that again. He's choking on it. Uh, this is very good news. Uh, I think most of the, the people who are shareholders of Disney understood that the company is heading back in the right direction. Now that Bob Iger is back, they're getting things settled again. The prime players, George Lucas, the Disney family, Vanguard, all that have rallied behind it. So it looks like this is over. Now, Reuters is quick to point out the official results won't be announced till tomorrow. 
And there are people who ca who have said they're voting one way who do have time, according to the rules, to change their votes. So, uh, so I think this came out a couple days ago, right? Because um, last I heard, the vote had become official, and it was like 94% for, uh, yes, 11 days ago. So the vote, vote is definitely official. Um, and it came out like 94% for Bob Iger, so it wasn't even close. So a stunner could happen like people could change their votes overnight and maybe it goes a different way but it looks like right now that uh disney has won the battle against ike perlmutter and nelson peltz anyway rob uh, you read about this you heard about vanguard coming in and then weighing in do you think this settles it or do you think we could still be in for some drama tomorrow uh you can't fight blackrock or vanguard you mm. can't yep. uh, yeah the vanguard i mean basically what people don't understand is vanguard and blackrock basically control earth yeah. <laughs> and so if you if you you can't go up once once vanguard um true uh bob chapek was the one that did the oversaturation of marvel um that being said bob Iger's hands are not clean bob Iger was the one who uh fired uh james gunn and that gave us our huge delay to guardians 3 that being said guardians 3 was great but like James Gunn was supposed to be the guy in charge of all of Marvel Cosmic, uh, the Cosmic side, and now he's working for DC. Um, but you, you can thank Bob Iger for that one. Vanguard or, or BlackRock, I mean, BlackRock's number one, Vanguard's number two. One, sorry if you guys don't, if you want to fight amongst yourselves about that, please don't come after me at late night and extinguish me. But um, I, uh, I, I do think, look, I think this is a good thing. I didn't know Robert Meyer Burnett was still on John Campia. Um, in case you're wondering, this guy, like, he will go on John Campia and be completely reasonable and have reasonable takes. And then he will turn around and pop up on Chud Networks and be a Chud. Like, he goes back and forth. Um, and there is that great moment where John Campia is almost calling him out without calling him out. So, so I'm kind of surprised he's on here still. Um, but yeah. Good thing. I think it's a distraction. I think Disney needs to get back to their core brand and do what they do best, which is entertaining everyone through various means. And the, Disney's been a mess. They've been a mess since the pandemic. Uh, Bob Iger's second reign has not gone as well as anybody hoped. I think all of this distraction needs to go away, and they need to focus on what Disney has always done best, that they really figured out when The Little Mermaid came out what to do. They spent two and a half decades or three decades being awesome and now they've been derailed. So let's put that train back on the track so we can go to all the realms in Disneyland and not be distracted. I think on top of that too, because you're talking about distractions, this whole thing in um, this uh, special purpose um, in, Florida. Land in, Flo in Florida is kind of settled now. And, and I think a lot of that is, is able to be put behind them now and they can yeah. move forward. So. By the way, also, I also want to bring this up too. Like since you know the Bob Iger reign, the, the first big bunch of it, is about damage control from what happened under Bob Chapek's era. Yes. And just to point out, like since Iger took over control, this is year to date, if you wanna take a look at this. The Disney, look, this is the Disney stock price since Bob Iger took back over. Holy shit. So they have been slowly. So that's how you know he's not a Chud, because a Chud would never point this one out. Holy shit. Trying to fix the damage you know, take out that organizational structure that Bob Chapek put in that nearly destroyed the company, reinvested authority and power back into the creatives like Kevin Feige. Kevin Feige is finally in charge of Marvel again now. And just doing that stuff. And look, we always say this, whenever a new regime takes over, it takes one and a half to three years to really see the results. But when you actually look at what's happening, Disney is heading back in the right direction. Now, when we're going to have to see how do they handle the marketing and get get awareness out there for Deadpool and Wolverine, what happens, you know, after that, that's going to be the key things that we're going to have to see. And that's still months away. But I, I think that's why a lot of the Disney shareholders have backed Disney on this and not gone with Pelts. It's like, yeah, we and, and listen, the one thing that Pelts and Perlmutter will say that I agree with was that the current Disney board botched the succession plan the current disney board botched the succession plan and made a huge mistake by installing bob chapek and they said yeah it was you know it was damaged during the chapek era but who put chapek in that position right y'all did and, and on that point i agree but but i gotta say even i as critical as i've been of bob chapek you remember when they hired him i was all for it on paper it was a good hire 
you know, all the mess at first. Well, you can't blame him that he was taking over when a pandemic was shutting everything down. It wasn't until later when he started doing the the uh, organizational restructure, moving the power balance, taking away the creative's abilities, all that kind of stuff. So I get that. But I do agree with him on that one point that it was this board's mistake and they've got to have a better succession plan moving forward because Iger's only going to be around for another year and a half or so. And they better have somebody really good in place or else we're just going to be right back to square one again. So here's hoping they can do a better job with that. Guys, we want to take a moment to thank a sponsor of today's video. Ah, no sponsor. Let's uh, see. Is that is that the rest of the video? Um, Question is for you guys. What do you think? He, uh, I don't know if that's what Taki was talking about. Um, he did have some moments where he went made fun of Pro Mutter. Um, I don't know. That was good, though. I think he did a solid coverage, anyways. Um, yes. Let's, uh, let's go over... Okay, so something I was interested in uh, uh, looking over. I don't think we'll go over the whole thing. Um, it's not this one. Um, but uh, I wanted to look at YMS versus EFAP on modern movies. Because here's the difference. Because EFAP just seems to blaze like everything down. But like they only cover like Hollywood movies. And I know YMS largely dislikes Hollywood movies. But I know he is big into the indie film community, and he likes indie movies, and I get that. I mean, in my recent experience at a film festival, indie movies are fucking awesome and worth checking. Like, if you ever get a chance to go to a film festival, do a film festival. They are awesome. You'll get so many great movies. Um, frankly, yeah, and you get lots of creative uh, output. So I wanted to see what their discussion between these two things were. So let's, let's see what their takes are. He is gone. It's very sad. Commenting on the representation of beloved character is turning into something that he doesn't like. Mm -hmm. um, my argument is that it's less to do with, like, it, it. it's not necessarily to do with, like, a oh, men can't be represented in, the, in this way. Like, he has a video where he's, like, talking about um, how they're trying to, like, destroy your heroes or something, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I think that it is also very much just a byproduct of the fact that they're keeping, they're continuing to use these main actors to the point where they're in their fucking 80s. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know how else you're going to fucking write them, right? It's more, well, it's more of an issue that we're trying to squeeze every last fucking piece of meat juice out of their dangles. <laughs> the <laughs> the so alive, you, like. you don't think that there's any other way they could write these characters if they're old than humiliating and dragging them down and but, shitting all but, over them there's there's no, no other it's no, no. it's either like come on okay so no, hold on hold on so we're there's well i don't know what yms is gonna say but they aren't humiliating them and dragging the shit out of them rags his whole point there that well i mean that's a fucking chud talking point anyway uh indy was an old man but he was kind of a badass like um as much as he was an old man in dial of destiny like the action scenes i thought were more believable in dial of destiny than they were in kingdom of the crystal skull even though he's way way older um yes <laughs> worst sentence continue to squeeze uh uh men juice out of their dangles yeah yeah <laughs> The example that was talked about before he answered this question was Indiana Jones 5. Yeah. That wasn't yeah. really the whole movie. That was like the intro to the whole movie. It was literally like this. I don't know if all of you watched it, but 
oh he, yeah he set it up and he was like you dang kids and he just like yelled out the window the rest of the movie he was doing shit like maybe once he complained uh, about his back or something but like he was um he wasn't he, like he, replaced he literally like, didn't he wanted to fucking die he wanted to die yeah he wanted to die by the end of it you want to know no no, 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 no. when, when he talks movie, about wanting to die not... at the end he's referring to his current state of life like throughout the his era in life is that nobody likes him yeah and that was his arc his arc was that he wanted to die and then because his life was in the best place and then he he fixed up his life because it's never you're never too old to fix up your life and it was a nice little moral he, has nothing he wasn't to gain. even necessarily wanting to i thought he wanted to stay because he like he, it's his life's work to st have studied that period in time so he, he was okay. he's that that's a good argument too it wasn't so much to die at the end it was just like hey let's 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 start a new life here kind of yeah hey with the consequence of dying while he was there but not necessarily if you remember when he returns that he would die he says like why why am i still moment. alive who am i alive for like he basically because yeah, he got hit hurt remember yeah, he, he he absolutely wanted to die, and he saw that the fact that he was had a bullet wound and he could just watch history unfold is his opportunity to have a death he could actually vaguely enjoy instead of having to be dragged back to life. I mean, I don't... Uh... That was the movie. It was horrible. Yeah. The, the, majority, the majority of the movie is not... You see, this is, again, this is uh, the, the problem. See... Um, Mahler and Rags are fine, um, you know, like, here's the deal, Adam's read of the movie, and I think is probably more intended, his read of the movie is probably more intended than, than otherwise, but they're, the, Mahler and Rags are going to take, um, words and stuff like that, um, words, it sounds weird, but they are going to essentially say, you know, he wants to die, even if, like, even if he wasn't, like, actually killing himself. Um, essentially, he wanted to 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 stay back in the past, and um, no, no. And uh, essentially, they're saying that Adam's read of the movie is wrong. It's wrong, um, which is really kind of shitty. Um, because the fact is that like art is up to interpretation, and I don't know why they're saying that's wrong. Uh, his read can be just as valid as theirs. Not like presenting him as like a like a piece. And part of the problem is Adam is being thoughtful, and when you're thoughtful, it slows you down. You can't quite be as uh, 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 on top of it because they can just throw shit at you, uh, and then you you want to be thoughtful and give a well thought out response, and yeah. And, but, you know, they, they don't care about well-thought-out response. They can jump on the fact that he wants to, like, be considerate. It's a shit or anything. Like, that. I, 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 don't, I don't even know if I'll agree with how we're framing how he's being presented at the beginning and end. But, like, those are the examples. It's just, like, well, at the, the beginning, opening he of was... the film and the... And the remember, world, he, right? He's a... Go ahead. Uh, do you remember how when we get to the school slash the university, like his students find him boring and they don't care about the subject at all? Yeah, because he's an old. Listen, um, the the old setup for Indiana Jones wasn't that like, um, wasn't that he was a brilliant professor. Uh, did they see the old movies? It wasn't that he was a brilliant professor that was super engaging. It was it was a classroom filled with young women who thought he was very hot. That was it. And guess what? Now he's an old man and his classroom's not filled with a whole bunch of women who think he's hot. Times have fucking changed on him. That's the, that's Indiana he Jones. Seems to care. Yeah, he I it's don't, fucking is that depressing. Like a commentary about is that I don't that's a that's a very interesting perspective because I don't consider personally, I don't consider that to be like a condemnation of him as a character. I just consider that as like an attempt at like I don't know like comedy or like just him showing how yeah. people don't relate to him. You could also argue just times have changed. Like I don't know, I don't know if it's I don't know if I agree that it's like a part of a larger cultural issue. See, that's the thing. So like because YMS is thoughtful, he's like, yeah, I don't know if I agree to that. Whereas these guys are just gonna assert their shit, which is uh, bullshit. To, for when the first movie, students seem to really like him. Way. One of us. The first movie. The, the kids thought he was hot. It was a whole bunch of young women who thought he was hot. It was that simple.
students thought he was hot. Yeah, and he's fucking. He's eighty. He just said it. They thought he was hot. He's in his eighties now. He's not hot anymore. He's years old. <laughs> like, yeah, but that's, this is indicative is of like, like he he could command an audience. Well, cool, so in the he third film, something that he, he has clearly to... had. A... It wasn't clear he was commanding an audience. It was pretty clear they just thought he was hot. Passion about. He has to sneak out of the university because so many people want to ask him questions about his life and stuff. Uh, kind of the implication I got was a lot of his students weren't actually clear of what was going on, but I mean, there's different reads. Yes. But when he's this age, nobody gives a shit. People aren't even showing up and they don't know. Yeah, because he's older. They haven't paid attention to the course at all to the point where they don't even know the answers to a basic question. And even, yeah. And so, even the way so he again, describes the topic is way different than how he describes it in Raiders. I'll, I'll say that, like, even even if I grant you that, like, his his uh, the way he's represented in the film is like insulting to the character. I think it's I think it's more of an issue of just like the fact that they're using old people and they're creatively bankrupt and just being like, OK, well, what, what the fuck do we do with this guy? He's old now. Right. Like, what? how do we incorporate that into the story? You know, so, they, so... they fucking they they did that in like Uncharted. It would be incredibly unrealistic for 80 year old Harrison Ford to be teaching a class and have a whole bunch of, you know, late teens, early 20s, young girls sitting in the front row making goo goo eyes at him. That'd be so weird and God, kind of creepy, honestly. It was kind of creepy in the originals, but like. Um, it's not like he was actually sleeping with him or anything, so it, it kind of uh, alleviated that point. But yeah, they were just hot for his bot, essentially. Um, and it may be hot for like the adventures of Indiana Jones, that to a degree. But like now he's in his fucking 80s. He's not going to have that. Started four, you know, like people didn't really. Do you remember? Wait, what do you mean by that? Much of an issue. Hey, hold on, what? Did, were, were they. Did, wasn't he like fucking old and like, oh, I'm, I'm what, too young and old for this shit? Like, yeah, wasn't he? He's Am not I misremembering that old? it? He retired for a couple of years. Okay. Like, there, was, there was not in Uncharted Four. The central conflict didn't have anything to do with him being old. It mainly had to do with the fact that he was bullshitting Elena about like what he wanted from life and lying to her so that he could vicary, like he could go off with his brother and go on adventures again, like because he was just Did... too insular, too self-focused, too much of a desire to get the treasure. Even though he said, "Well, I'm trying to help Sam," and it's like. Yeah, I mean, you like this. Don't don't lie. You know, don't bullshit. It's not about him being old. Do you do you feel like the central conflict of Indiana Jones Five was about him being old? It's about the so the the point the it film wants him... to make is that he feels like, and he's supported throughout the film that the world is done with him. He hasn't got anything else to offer. He can go. But by the end, we're supposed to believe through the events that he's got a hell of a lot more to offer. And culturally speaking, he's incredibly important. I think they. And what's wrong with that? failed miserably at making that argument yeah i don't know i just like that wasn't my main takeaway from the film okay it was but just like a dumb is, boring action movie <laughs> correct me if i'm wrong but did you just say as well that um what are they going to do considering how old he is but also that he is he's okay throughout most of the movie he's still doing stuff he's not like he's not pathetic or anything like, exactly those, I, but, I just well, i don't, I, I don't... those two it's, positions in some sense, it's the worst of both worlds isn't it you are simultaneously well, no, not recognizing his age while also m using his age as a justification for this temperament when there are other possibilities and other options at your disposal. I, what I'm saying is that the small amounts of that that they included in the film is because they're they're lazy writers doing the obvious thing of like, well, he's old. I guess we'll make it about him being old. But it even even with that considered, it doesn't make up like most of the film, right? It's it's not. I, I didn't walk away from that film feeling like that's what it was about or that's like the message that I was to get from it. I think even Mangold um, would tell it, you that's what the film is about. The like the question of what is Indiana Jones to like, the world. As as like one of the themes in the movie, sure, but like the primary thing. Most of it was just dumb action shit. Okay. Um, so the extended sequences that are about him talking doing stuff that aren't the action sequences like those still exist and mm -hmm. it's a huge part of the film they do um as well like you know there's so many other options everybody has to do with older characters i, I, I would never want to restrict it to the point where it's like if they're 80 then you're gonna have to do a story about how they're too old for this sort of thing 
as they're opposed old to and sad and nobody likes them and they're alone. <laughs> loads of people just... recommended like he's still able to it's walk just, and vaguely run, thing. right? So all you need to do is a Chris Pratt type, a son, anybody. Obviously, short round was suggested. They come in and they do the adventuring portion. He's always advisor, and you'll get involved here and there with a whip. You'll yeah, do this, that, and the, the other. Historian, you never, he's the, the theme guy. of like, is he too old for this? What's what life is worth living anymore? You don't have to have those themes. We can talk. There's so many things people go through when they get older, and it's fucking annoying that every time we do this with like mainstream studio projects from Disney, they're like, what if they wanted to kill themselves? Yeah. What if they suck? Here, here's a question: Is this is this something that has happened? Oh, did Alan Horn fire gun? I didn't hear about that. Um, well, maybe I'm wrong about Bob Iger then. In movies other than the new Indiana Jones and The Last Jedi. Yes. Or are those like, like Blade Runner? Uh, we that could. Example, or... well, I'm not familiar enough with Blade Runner. I'd have to rewatch the new Blade Runner to get better arguments. I only watched the one time. I didn't like it, but um. So Blade Runner, I love Blade Runner 2049. I'm actually, I have mixed feelings about the original Blade Runner. I think they're, I think it's a bit overrated. I don't think it's bad. I think Rutger Hauer is fucking amazing in it. I love Rutger Hauer in that movie. Um, I'm not actually as thrilled with Harrison Ford's character in that movie. Um, but I think Harrison Ford's fantastic in uh, Blade Runner 2049. And Ryan Gosling is amazing as well ryan gosling just kind of being uh, uh almost like a non-emotional character which is perfect for that 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 uh that that role that he does in that movie um and he does a he does so much with very little it's really amazing um blade runner 249 is amazing if you haven't seen it the the kind of it, well, I mean, there's loads of different examples all over the place, right? Obviously, the new James Bond, he wanted to kill himself, essentially, by the end. He did kill himself by the end, technically. Obviously, he was still saving people, but it's like, okay, uh, Nick Fury can, would be another very we, recent uh, one. Can we hold this thought? I'm just going to piss again, but okay. um, I am interested in this conversation, so don't don't keep playing without me. I'll be I'll be back. I guess I guess what I'm uh, this this I guess this is, this is a common theme. Um, when I when I see. Uh, certain aspects or issues or elements of uh, film, and I guess partic particularly character writing, criticized um, in a particular way that, you know, this might just be because of my own bias and the types of media that I consume. Um, but I see it very, like, heavily uh, correlating or at least, you know, acting in a symbiotic relationship with with this whole sort of, like, idea of this agency over um like we have to make your your male characters uh unre unrelatable we have to like disparage them in some sort of way like i i think it's less of an issue of like recognizing that that's a thing and more of an issue with i guess trying to trying to have a conversation about like okay what is the intent behind that i don't think it's nefarious and i think that a lot of these conversations wind up as being like they're trying to, you know, there's a they, and they're trying to, uh, they're they're trying to make it. They're they're trying to brainwash you into believing these characters were never good in the first place, which I think is actually very similar to a quote from a critical drinker video that I watched. He's saying yeah. that they're trying to convince you that those characters were not good in the first place, and I think that that's, I think that that's kind of like pushing it in terms of like, uh trying trying to analyze the intent of the writer there i think that there's other explanations for that that are probably more reasonable i think that writers can often be lazy i don't think when we're talking about you know beloved characters of a franchise existing and then growing to the the actors are 80 years old and we're in the fucking nostalgia generation where they're remaking all these movies and then they do soft reboots and then they want to bring back the old actors because that's the popular thing to do and everybody's doing it. I think it's just lazy writing. I think it's literally just like, oh, what do we do in a way that passes the torch in a lot of these films? Sometimes not. Sometimes they try to end it. I don't know exactly what the fuck they were going for in India and Joe's five, but in The Last Jedi, they were definitely trying to do a passing the torch thing there. Like, oh, okay, like, you, you know, this is not the character you should be caring about. I don't know if that's that's a nefarious way to try and make you hate the character that you grew up with. 
Um, I don't know if that's necessarily the goal, and I'm I'm not sure I agree that it's as prevalent as as a uh, critical drinker or perhaps you as well are making it out to be. So the desire, as far as I can tell, if it's non-malicious, is a sense of like ego-driven sort of I'm going to make my mark on the future of this IP and I'm going to deconstruct. Like deconstruct is the key word. They want to show you what made this person the way they are in culture and the good and bad of that and are they still that person and what does that person mean for the future? That, I think... Well, he said, well, Mahler just said it's ego-driven, then he just talked about deconstructing the character, of which there's nothing wrong with deconstructing a character. That can actually be very interesting. That's not an ego-driven thing, that's just character deconstruction. I think as a broad understanding actually matches a shit ton of the examples. Like, um, recently with Secret Invasion, they spend a significant amount of time telling us that all of Nick Fury's achievements throughout the MCU were not his. He took them from other people and he claimed responsibility for them okay Taki I was actually wondering about that because uh he he did he did uh, did, you know make fun of uh Perlmutter and uh uh, Pelts a little bit in that video I watched but it was good to get like some interesting I didn't know about the stock prices and I thought that was very interesting complete ratcon and it's like that seems just completely fucked up and changes everything about him and it's like Can, can you can you say that sorry you need to say what the character did again. I... Like, um, recently with Secret Invasion, they spend a significant amount of time telling us that all of Nick Fury's achievements throughout the MCU were not his. He took them from other people and he claimed responsibility for them. Complete ratcon. And it's like, that seems just completely fucked up and changes everything about it. What? Uh, are you saying because sometimes there is a scroll there? Because I assume when there is a scroll there, that means he sent the scroll there him and it's like can, yeah. can you can you say that sorry you need to say what the character did again i was just hung up on the fact that there's a marvel show i haven't heard about and i keep getting introduced <laughs> to them and realizing that they exist they um it's like secret invasion sorry i had a th- i was I they was argue that very secret all of his like he's supposed to nick fury is the super spy is that the one with the be... ai uh yeah intro yeah yes. okay um i've vaguely heard of it nick fury's known like primarily character wise being incredibly intelligent shrewd and st- uh sort of tactical he's going to be the best he's like the a batman sort of thing of the of the mcu he's going to be able to defeat and plan he's got nothing to him except his brain and his gun sort of thing right that's the kind of character we've got they managed to maintain that relatively in the mcu even though he doesn't have a lot of appearances he's I definitely so. kept up yeah. a sense of uh mm-hmm. you're gonna you're like he's gonna be impressive whatever he ends up doing in yeah. the new show, they argue a group of aliens needed a place to stay on Earth. They were literally, like, desperate. Um, and he basically said to them, I'll figure out a home for you if you do secret agent stuff for me. And that involves collecting dirt on allies to leverage them, uh, defeating people, maybe even doing... So he was actually the mastermind over the the, the mastermind um, in that scenario. So I don't see how that diminishes him. Like, dude, like, secret invasion had so much wrong with like, especially that last fucking episode, but, like, oh, my God, a spy story, and they turned it into a big superpower bash beat em up That was so fucking disappointing. That being said, um, the fact that scrolls sometimes take the identity of Nick Fury throughout the history of the MCU and, uh, and do jobs for him does not diminish him remotely. In some ways, you could argue that makes him cooler doing hits sort of thing and getting information on different enemy squads. Mm-hmm. He got all of that and he rose through all of the ranks until he reached the position we meet him in, in like Iron Man. And the, the, they have an explicit speech from one of the characters saying like, you, you motherfucker, you took credit for everything we did. Don't try and rewrite history. That sort of thing. And it's just another one that fits the mold of like, holy fuck, you, what, what's the goal here? Have you completely rewritten all of his actions to now making him a completely different character? It's like, well, I think, I think that it's just bad writing, and I don't think that's meant to be uh, the audience takeaway. I think that's supposed to be that character's point of view. And uh, idiots that are chosen for writing projects not based on their talent. And I like how they're arguing Secret Invasion with YMS, even though YMS didn't even hear of Secret Invasion. So why, why would you like? That's such a weird argument. But just nepotism and industry uh, shoulder rubbing and shit. I think that's, I, I honestly think that that's just most of it is just, like, we, th- we... I don't remotely understand why they're discussing uh, Secret Invasion with somebody who hasn't even heard of Secret Invasion. I would like to think that writers wouldn't be so clueless 
to uh, not understand how an audience would like to see their favorite characters being treated. But fuck it. Like, here's an example. Did you watch uh, Glass? Like, yeah. That's M. Night. M. Night wrote those characters. Yeah. And that is the. At, I could not think of a more unceremonious way to end those characters. Stories. I completely that agree. Was, yeah. Th that entire fucking thing is bullshit. Like, you watch that and you think, did you even care about these characters? Like, and that's coming from the guy that wrote them. I think that, that we shouldn't be so naive as to think that it can't just be because there's a lot of writers that are just really bad and not necessarily. Like, sure. I think subconsciously, maybe, maybe statistically, there could be a higher, uh, you know, some amount of it being like politically motivated or, you know, maybe, maybe uh, ideologically motivated. But I, I just don't think that that's the answer. And I think it, I think the, uh, I think when we're talking about film, even, even just mainstream film, I think, I think it's a bit more nuanced than that. I, I'm happy to. I would completely agree that incompetence is absolutely a part of all of these, no matter what. If we find other motivations mm -hmm. as well as other influences, that incompetence will always be a part of it. But like when approaching an Indiana Jones five, I imagine they sat around thinking like, "What should we make this film about?" And someone settled on the idea of like, "Okay, so we'll start with like, he's going to be kind of. We'll bring him down. He's going to have a couple things going wrong. And by the end of the movie, he's going to find like a new lease on life." So whenever you have a long time before we, we when we haven't seen a character. Uh, yeah, it's common to think of some way to bring them down so you can uh, give them uh, an arc, an easy arc, honestly. Um, I mean, there are great movies that do this. Mad Max Fury Road does this uh, really well. Because, uh, well, the Mad Max movies have uh, the most haphazard continuity of any film franchise I can think of. But... Um, essentially, you can watch that first Mad Max movie, and it's like the story of this guy losing his family and becoming a villain, and then he 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 encounters that that village and road warrior, and he helps him out, and he kind of uh, you know he finds his humanity again, and then um, and then you kind of get the, the first half of Beyond Thunderdome, which is fucking brilliant. Um, that society where he's he has to do the fight, and it's run by Tina Turner. It's first half of beyond thunderdome is great and then the second half is actually where his arc is and the second half sucks but where he finds that village of kids and he helps uh guide them to freedom that's kind of where he becomes a hero and then you follow it up uh nearly 30 years later i guess 35 years no 25 years later i think 20 yeah Am I doing math? Yeah, 25 years later. No. 26 years later? Anyways, 26 years later. Um, and then, so so you got Tom Hardy, so it's younger Mad Max. Um, and they bring him down. Like, he, he's he's kind of been captured. He's been enslaved. Um, they, they give a little back. They don't really explain it, but it seems like there was a young girl that he encountered that he took care of and who was murdered. And he kind of lost a lot of himself, and he has to rebuild himself from that. Um, from that, and uh, he, they do a really good job. That, that, yeah, that's kind of what they do frequently. Um, you know, you kind of you set up your main character so he has an arc to go on. Um, and you can argue maybe they do that too often. That that is actual an argument. That is actually an argument. Um, you know, use the gap between movies to 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 say your hero has been brought down a bit and he has to pick himself back up. You can argue that's done too often. Um, but, like, yeah, that's just an arc you give your characters. Um, there's nothing, like, emasculating about it, because the whole point is that he finds himself at the end. If it land on a really happy note that Indiana Jones is always going to be needed and necessary, and he'll even pick up his hat to let the audience know, you know what, he's still out there doing his adventures. It's like, okay. And then the incompetence set in and the deconstruction angle of, like, trying to get more commentary on different things he did in the original films with a new perspective on it so to speak and it ends up crashing and burning horrifically and it matches a set unfortunately that i wish would fucking go away because mm -hmm. it's interesting you said about the 80 years old i think christopher lee was around 80 when he did count dooku right it's like you know yeah and christopher lee was frequently re like i mean when you rewatch those movies christopher lee was frequently replaced by a cgi double frequently you could tell clearly
<laughs> I'm not saying the prequels are amazing. I'm just saying that what I'll do they do one, with him? I'll do one even more recent, right? They brought Christopher Lee back for the Hobbit trilogy. And, you know, the movies aren't good. But, you know, they did. They, they were like way them. worse on a second watch. Holy shit. They definitely get worse on rewatches. I think that's absolutely. my highest rating jump. From a five uh, to a one. Oh, whoa. <laughs> to a one? Whoa, calm down. Like yeah. they're they're for better the, than Dial the, they're way better than Dial no, of Destiny. No, the fight no the the <laughs> uh, No, Dial of Destiny is better than the Hobbit movies. Like I I mean we're all out our own perspective, but yeah. Uh, the third Hobbit movie, Battle of the Five Armies. That was pretty bad, yeah. yeah. It's the worst. Most of the, disrespectful worst of the three. use of my time. Ever. Most disrespectful use Ever? of time. Oh, if I'd you don't wanna, review, I'd, have you have you got videos on I'd these? I'd way cause... rather watch that. I mean, that that is true. Um, uh, the first one was kind of uh, fine-ish, and then the second one I thought was decent, and the third one I I only watched the third one once. The third one I really did, did not enjoy at all. Then like Dial of Destiny, I got, easy. I, I had the video of me seeing in theaters where I was way overly charitable about it. Um, wow. And also, the second time I watched it was the extended edition, which was just the most cancerous fucking thing. Okay. Well, the, the Battle of Five Armies extended edition is the only Lord of the Rings movie that has an R rating. My God. Which is funny. Fun fact. Which is funny, but then you watch the extended edition of those movies and you're like, what the fuck? So, that yeah. was a, yeah, bit of a tonal thing, but... Where I was, what I would say, even though those movie that trilogy is not good, there are legitimately good parts of those movies. Even the third one has legit. There are legitimately good parts of Dial of the Destiny. Plenty. Legitimately good things in it. I don't know what I could say is good about Dial of Destiny. Uh, Harrison Ford does a good job. I think Phoebe Waller Bridge does a good job, uh, kind of playing a, a counter to him. Um. I think the action in Dial of Destiny works fairly well, even though Harrison Ford's older than shit. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I overall enjoyed Dial of Destiny. The CGI for young uh, Indiana Jones was pretty fucking good. They did a really good job with that. There's there's lots of good aspects to Dial of Destiny. Eh, it could have been worse. Well, and I thought you were going to say um, could have been worse. you were going with like how they treated Christopher Lee, uh, despite the fact that that was one of his few remaining acting roles. I think before he was unable to act anymore, um, and that's you know significantly worse than Harrison Ford, who was still able to run around and shout and do all kinds of. Things. It's just a, a suggestion that they never had to go down these routes, but they often do with a lot of the most beloved characters of all time culturally, like Luke Skywalker, like Han Solo, like Indiana Jones. Why? 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 How why? How many stop? examples are there, though? Like, because I well, like, how many we would like you need four, right? to concede that it's a D pattern? Whether or not it's a recognizable pattern, in the sense that you can point out for however many examples in the past. When did Last Jedi come out? Twenty seventeen. Yeah. Or something. Yes, right. I We're talking so, about yeah. the past like six years. Mm -hmm. Um, we're going. To oh, a wall thoughts. Yeah. Um comic book knowledge could hurt you with the mcu i'm not like i i enjoy the mcu but like it definitely borrows elements from the comic books it's not the same like uh the like the most obvious thing um is thanos's motivation obviously in infinity war um they went in the movies they went for more of like a realistic thing where it's like you know he's going to reduce the population it's not a great strategy for him, but I think it's also clear he's he doesn't really care about actually reducing the population. He just wants to kill a whole bunch of fucking people. And in the comic book, he is literally courting death. And when I say courting death, I mean he wants to hook up with Lady Death, the embodiment of the Grim Reaper, death in the Marvel Universe. He wants to get down with her. Um, I kind of wish the movies had done a mix. Like, you know, you could have done Infinity War pretty much exactly how Infinity War was done. Maybe introduce more of the Lady Death aspect later. Of course, I don't know. Endgame was still really long, so maybe that wouldn't have been great. Endgame was pretty good, too, so I don't want to completely shit on it. But, uh... Yeah, it's it's definitely how, like, comic books and movies, there's, there's definite differences going on. And there's, like, no MCU movie's been really comic accurate they definitely borrow elements from the comic books but eh, not really no. to see more of those examples in this generation simply because 
we are in the generation of nostalgia bullshit where we're for like oh, previous generations of movies didn't bring back old characters right they didn't like there was this wasn't really as much of a thing in previous generations of movies so but considering it, how often they fumble it like to where it's so a, a bizarre consistency with how can you know how badly they do but it. don't we have comparisons like, to make I though i wouldn't argue they fumble it all that often but uh I don't know. I'm sure they have. I just don't remember where they fumbled it. Um, Blade Runner 2049 was brilliant. Mad Max uh, Fury Road is recast, so I don't know if that quite counts. Um, I thought Indiana Jones' Dial of Destiny was pretty good. I love The Last Jedi. I don't know yeah. if I would say it's a consistency. But the previous generation it, of it bringing happened. Indiana Jones back didn't do this to him. Like, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Yeah, but he wasn't that old. And they, he is. Here, the age they doesn't also, have anything did, to do with they it. Did try age to, doesn't have anything to do with it. They did try to set it up. He was older than. They did try to set it up so that Shia LaBeouf would take over it. Yeah, the but end, they right? also ended it with him saying the... no. They took the hat off him. Well, remember at the end of Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, he married to Marion. He, you know, was happy. They kind of left him on a high note. Yeah, and it was the anyway, end. Which is what Dial of Destiny did as well. It left him on a high note where he and Marion are getting back together. Regardless of whether or not there's some examples of... He was 66, uh, by the way, being brought, filming that. Old people being brought back in the 90s, early 2000s, or whatever, right? Like, there's... Exi the, I'm not saying it never happened, but we are in the generation of it happening consistently of there being old IPs that are revived, revamped, soft reboots, whatever, bring back the old characters. The fact that this is constantly happening and, a, and is constantly a thing that is happening means that it's going to be more likely that we're going to see those characters. I disagree, Tonky. I, I, I already said, but I, I love 2049. I think it's better than the original. Disrespected and mishandled. I don't think that it's necessarily like the goal to do that i think that it's just like a, a of course i will also say it really depends what version of the original you watch there are versions that are much more boring than there, there there's decent versions of the original and there's not great versions of the original there's like six different cuts of blade runner it's obnoxious the, um a byproduct of us having these movies in this generation anyway and the writing just being bad like we brought up Blade Runner 2049, which was kind of like a passing the torch sort of thing. And Harrison Ford is like, well, did you watch? Did, I've seen did it, but not since it came out, it and came I'm out. not a fan. Not a fan. Yeah, I think I remember having a conversation about this on your thing a while ago. But mm -hmm. I, re I really love that movie. And um, I don't know. Like, I don't Thank know, you. Thanks. know if I could... I don't know if I could watch that and attribute it as like, we're supposed to... Uh, we're supposed to not like this character anymore because they're old and because they're, you know, disheveled. Well, I don't know. Based off I, of I, I feel, he, here's the thing. I just watched The Lorax, which was a very bad movie. And within the movie, within the singular title, there's a character who grows old and is like, ah, oh, I can't do anything anymore. Like, I just think that's such a trope already that just writers who are, a bunch of Nepo babies in their 20s and 30s just don't know what old people are like. And so they just have to write them in this, like, uh, you know, like, I'm old. Okay, but what about like, the ones that... Like, I think it's, I think it's just... All... Yeah, well, Lucifer, yeah, Secret Invasion had serious issues. Well, I mean, they would never be able to do a comic... They could do a more comic-accurate version of Secret Invasion, though. Um, because... Uh... I mean, Secret Invasion, you'd need, like, all the superheroes in there, and obviously they're not going to do that. They could get some of them, though. I don't know. Like, I kind of like the idea of maybe just doing Secret Invasion as almost just a pure spy story where you just have scrolls in spy agencies and you, you have to flush them out. You know, and then some of the superheroes might be exposed to scrolls as they did with Rhodey. Um, spoilers for Secret Invasion, which is kind of disappointing anyway. Um... But, yeah, like, I actually don't even know if I care that much for comic accuracy. I just want them to do a good story, and they don't always. I mean, Successful. Lack of creativity. What about the ones that don't choose Which that direction and the ones that people like? So we could go with, like, uh, Logan would be one, right? That film's a deconstruction of Wolverine. 
but people really like it and it doesn't Yeah, he's old. Yeah. <laughs> I'm saying I'm saying people Again, liked it's it. It's like the odd Logan is one that the first time I watched it I didn't like it and then the second like probably like the third time I watched it I fell in love with it. Fucking amazing movie. Obvious. Yeah. Yeah, like, but I'm mean? saying that the direction for the character to go and the types of ideas that they have they at least feel compelled to bring up as part of the themes of the character. And you see I see some of the chat here, Lightning NC. Um, YMS can't think. YMS is just being thoughtful. He's just, you know, taking the what they're saying into consideration and just offering his opinions on it. Sure. Oh, okay, no, so I'm not... Shit. They're like, oh, the actor's old. I thought this was a old, given. So I'm, could... I'm saying that throughout Logan, he's not, like, pathetic. He's not uh, being told by all of the characters that he's worthless sort of thing, and he doesn't want to, like, uh, give up on people or whatever. I don't know if he's being told he's pathetic at all, but, like... He, he he's he's not doing great in Logan. Whatever. The deconstruction think, is what does Wolverine we, represent? I think that we hold different values in terms of uh, the social standings or how beloved characters are treated. Because I don't see those things as too different personally. Because I don't really feel generally like attached to any of those characters in like a nostalgic way. But like you know even. I'm trying to think a good of a good example of something where I could feel that same way. Um, I just, but like mm, you could imagine what it would it. be to not want these to see these characters well, I mean, you, constantly. Disrespected. You mentioned glass, like that. That is close to it, right? I assume. Well, yeah, it's like entirely unceremonious. But yeah. I don't, I don't know. I, I can't watch that and think that they're trying to make me feel disrespected by doing that. I watch that and think, "Wow, M Night's fucking stupid." <laughs> yeah, no, but uh, <laughs> like that, I, that's I, my I, takeaway is is not like what a, he did to those two characters the is so of, beyond like, fucked up, and and I completely agree with you. And that if it were like like if if M Night had quotes related to well I wanted to do it to show people that the characters are blah 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 like like these things are going to play into it as well right like what what the creators mm -hmm. have to say about these sorts of things what ideas they're trying to represent um this whole era of it um there are legacy characters that do return that, as anomalies that are treated well um Logan was one I was trying to bring up that people felt like Logan was respected in that film but you know like well, I mean, that wasn't really a character brought up that we hadn't really seen before. He had been fairly active, and then Logan was brought up as his swan song. That's not a great example. Like uh, Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man. They could have brought him in as a depressed, disheveled, yeah. sad Peter Parker who's lost the will to live. Well, Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man, as well as Andrew Garfield, like, they, they were great in that movie, but they don't like characters with full arcs. They are introduced late Act 2? And, uh... I think it's late act two, uh, late act two, and then they're just there to kind of help them take down the bad guys. They 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 work together to take down the bad guys. They do a good job, but they aren't like uh, full characters with arcs really. Um, actually, Andrew kind of has an arc now. That I think about it. Um, they they were kind of clever in how they wove that in there because uh, yeah, he got to save uh, uh, MJ, and that was really important to him. They did they did a really good job of that. Uh, kind of a subtle arc for him. Uh, Tobey Maguire really didn't have an arc. But yeah. they didn't. They made him the mentor. Here, here's here's what I was trying to say earlier. I feel like even if they did do that with Peter Parker... I mean, an argument can be made that No Way Home is kind of a passing the torch movie. Spider-Man, which I love, I wouldn't feel like personally slighted by that in any way. It would depend um, for me on and execution. I didn't, feel, I didn't feel that way in, in uh, Glass either. I just felt like, wow, this is bad writing, <laughs> right? I didn't feel like my... I, I feel like a lot of people uh, very much kind of attach their identities to these characters in, in ways. And I feel like it can feel like... Um, that's an interesting sentence. I feel like it can feel like to a lot of people um that their experience is being like diminished by having these characters um being less respected in in a piece of media whereas like i'm so detached from these characters just to give you an idea my takeaway from this and i do think it's interesting because i think um what you're seeing is uh kind of efap is just throwing stuff at adam that he's not as familiar with although he can come up with some examples they were on secret invasion for longer than they should have been though because adam has no basis for what to actually uh go over with secret invasion um but they're kind of just throwing it th this shit at him and um 
yeah, ask him to kind of defend it. And, like, I think he's doing, I think he's making good arguments as to how they're misrepresenting it. Um, Because obviously they have their angle and they're going to, they have their angle, they have their goals, and they're going to speak of it very assertively. While YMS is just trying to honestly, like, be reasonable. Characters, like, even characters that I love, like, I feel like I, I feel like this might be pointing towards like more of like a generational sort of like parasocial uh, experience with media, right? I feel like it's perfectly reasonable to be upset when characters that inspired you would like shout on. I, I wouldn't call it. I don't think I'd describe it as parasocial compared to. Uh... Well, that's the thing. Like I'm trying. I don't think I like Last uh, Jedi, fucking Dial of Destiny. These are not characters. That I would consider shit on. These are characters that kind of uh, found themselves in a low point and picked themselves back up and were badasses at the end and recovered, which is kind of awesome. It's kind of awesome to show that these characters can still have, uh, even if they've gone through shit, they can still uh, rise up and uh, still reach new heights. Uh, like any mentor in I, life. I, I get what you're saying. I don't hold that much of an emotional stake in uh even my favorite characters uh you know being shat on in later incantations of media or anything like i've always said i've said this a million times people can talk about my favorite movies of all time and say that they're shit i don't care right like it doesn't really matter like i care about my own experience with it um but yeah i i i th i, th I think that I think we're kind of getting at this here is that I, I think there's a lot of people that uh, relate so closely to these characters and hold them in a such a special place in their heart. And I'm not trying to say this in an insulting way, but just in, in a way where I'm trying to understand uh, the perspective here. Uh, I think that there's a lot of people that hold these characters to such a, an important place in their heart that they feel slighted by how they're represented in in media which which is interesting to me because i i personally just don't feel that way and but now i feel like i'm understanding more about these people anyway okay does that make sense um sure the the core of this being the you um you were like I, i'm trying to get back to the video in some way i think was that was it drinker brought this up as sure uh with indiana jones and star wars and you said is it even happening outside of them and do you feel as though that's been answered Say that one more time. Uh, so Drinker mentioned Indiana Jones and Star Wars is obviously included. And then you said, is it even happening outside of them? Do you feel you still want examples? or? I I mean, I've been given examples. I, I don't know to what degree I, I would consider it to be like... Valid? A cultural issue. Okay. Is I, I guess what I'm trying to say. Obviously, the it, it can it, be a trend that you're noticing. Like I see, sometimes I'll see trends that I notice in movies where it's like only four movies have done it, but I watch enough movies or I'm like aware of like the inspirations of enough movies where I'm like, okay, I see what's starting to happen here, or like trailerisms, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like when the Inception bomb happened, like right after District Nine, I was like, this is becoming a thing. That was the second time it happened, and then it became a huge thing, right? Like I get that you can notice if, trends, um, but like if there were five I, I, it, writers, it's, it's again. Just real quick, if there were five Sorry. writers, the, one of them did it maliciously, one of them did it because he just was skipping through a bunch of character arcs and he landed on old equals, wants to die. Third one did it because they love the character and they feel like it's perfectly representative of where they'd go next. That's kind of like Ryan Johnson with Luke Skywalker. He felt that that was the thing to do. And the fourth guy is like, oh, well, I love it when characters do this, I just in general, so I just want to make this character do it. And then the fifth guy literally didn't even write it. It was AI. It was just that. But if all five happen at the same time, it's almost impossible not to see it as a pattern. I would imagine that's fair, even if we don't fully understand the motivations for everybody. Sure, sure. So, uh, pattern pattern recognition is subjective, and I will give that. Yes, you can see that as a pattern. I will say that that is that is a noticeable pattern that one that one can notice. My issue, I guess, is I guess perhaps I am incorrectly attributing this, but I, I my issue is with it being framed as kind of like a a cultural problem. Which is kind of what seems to be the the takeaway in this interview, right? Um, for me, and I imagine possibly for Fringy and Rags, I'm not 100 percent sure. We tend to draw all of it back to incompetence um, because you can almost do anything that people might hate on paper well, uh, and so 
deconstructing all of these characters, even if that was their goal, which I'm not necessarily saying it is, at the core of it all, it can... Yeah, I mean, I feel like... Uh, well, how long was this original live stream? Because I, I do feel like right now EFAP and YMS are just kind of doing the... Uh, YMS is... Or not YMS. EFAP is trying to do the... Essentially the anti-woke argument. Um, they're intellectualizing the anti-woke argument, as they always do. And YMS is just trying to figure out, like, what is your exact um, angle? Because I'm not seeing it. Um, and yeah, I, I, you can kind of tell, I think YMS is getting a little wiped out. Um, how long was that, though? Um, are we going to get times? Nine hours. That was an, the original stream was nine fucking hours. Holy shit! And of course, uh, uh, yeah. Now, now, since this discussion, uh, Ma, the EFAP guys have gone after Y YMS. Um, I remember the day after this discussion happened, um, a whole bunch of EFAP guys ended up in my comments of all places, and we're posting about how YMS is uh, bad faith. And all the usual EFAP stuff. And it's like, I wonder what happened. That's when I found out um, that, like, essentially, YMS did a video where he criticized Critical Drinker. Very tepid critiques, I want to add. But he criticized Critical Drinker. And then they, they brought him on and they went over the whole video uh, and just picked at it. And, like, you can tell, like, he's been going at this probably for a few hours. And he's kind of like, oh, Jesus Christ can always be attributed to their ineptitude and watching them struggle to mm -hmm. try and make whatever point they wanted to make. Like, um, people are, like, outraged that Nick Fury has an arc in that season about overcoming his, like, bigotry towards aliens as a black man in the show, which is pissing everybody off. And it's just like, yeah, the director was probably like, well, I'm trying to make a point about how racism is bad. And it's like, yeah, and you've, you've, you've made it in one of the yeah. most, like, awkward and dumbassery ways ever. You know, the incompetence can often explain almost everything. But it doesn't change the fact do you, that... Do you... I wish there was more, res like, I think competence does breed respect for, like, a character you're dealing with. Do you feel like there's any relation between, like, taking an issue with how beloved characters are treated in later um, versions of the uh, franchise versus, uh, like, talking about how, let's say, like, men are treated in film or, like, how male characters are written? Like, do, do you feel like that's kind of, like, in the same vein? Um, um, I don't think so. Um, because you could theoretically have, yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't see why they would be, no, I don't think there's any real connection between the two, other than maybe the people mm -hmm. who noticed one also noticed the other. Yeah, I, I feel like I'm just trying to be, um, I'm trying to be fair in the sense that, like, um, I'm not really the type of person to like care too much about like you know seeing how i'm represented in a film or like seeing how a particular race or gender like when i'm arguing about like women in film like i'm more or less just saying like here's what here's what people who are trying to make that change are at least saying right here's their argument and you know well lucifer i'm not even saying Mahler needs to write his own stories but what YMS does that I respect different from EFAP, even though they might have some opinions on uh, modern uh, Hollywood movies. Um, although I don't, I think like they both dislike modern Hollywood movies, but for different reasons. I think YMS's thoughts on modern Hollywood movies are much more thoughtful. And Mahler, like honestly, Mahler and Rags and probably Fringy are just intellectualizing the anti woke arguments. Um, however, uh, uh, what YMS does is he goes to film festivals and he watches tons of independent movies because he, he has a passion for the media and he sees tons of movies that he loves. Um, so there's like this, that's a huge difference. Like with YMS, I get the sense that he loves movies. With Mahler and Rags and Fringy, I can't get that. Like I, I have that clip of Rags saying that Doctor Strange 2 was the worst movie he's ever seen in his life, which tells you um, how little um, movie knowledge he must have if he thinks that's the worst movie ever. Just shockingly little. 
you know, like at least engage with it, right? I don't really, I don't really care either way. And so it's like I don't think he necessarily needs to do movies, but like if he loves the medium, then he should like go look for good movies. If he's not enjoying Hollywood movies, then don't watch Hollywood movies. In terms of, you know, uh, the particular demographics, I don't think, but. Um, I don't know. I feel like I feel like a lot of the conversation surrounding like culture and injecting that into film is just so not what I care about in terms of uh, why I love film. Right. I love I love film for the craftsmanship. I sorry, the craftsmanship. I love film for the, you know, the directing, the meticulous if, um, elements, the details, the because that is true, Lucifer, like he, he is not he could spend like he, he does 13 hour fucking videos that's time he could spend literally just spending all day at film festival just watching so many probably a lot of really good movies there, there'll be duds at film festival but like that's the cool thing about film festivals too you walk in you take a seat what movie's about to come on maybe you know the title that's about it that's it you just walk in see what see what it gives you it, it's 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 awesome and so many of them will be fucking good and it's like you don't know what you're expecting um yeah, there are, like, if you don't like Hollywood movies, there are options. It, like, technology has gotten to a point where indie movies can look so goddamn good. And I mean, like, they were just talking to Indiana Jones. I mean, independent movies, not Indiana Jones movies, which, I mean, outside uh, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, they look pretty good as well. But, um, yeah, there's so many options as far as movies you can watch. Because we, we, I feel like we're, we're similar. We're on, we're on adjacent roads because... When uh, mm -hmm. these sorts of things happen, it's like the rewrites or the, the a lot of the time. Like take Black Widow for example; she was very specifically characterized, start, middle, end, and the MCU and is dead. Her primary characteristic is that she wanted a family. She got taken away from hers. The newest version of her, they invent a history where she had a family that she completely ditched and then uh, forgot she kind of had, and then reconnected during the events of another MCU film. It was like, what how is, did you? What is the newest version? Wait. Her arc throughout the MCU was that she wanted to have a family. Like, outside of one scene in, uh, 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 Age of Ultron, which is a little cringy and a little dated, um, where she talks about wanting to have children but not being able to, I don't, like, I don't recall her saying she needs a family. I do recall it being a thing where she kind of found a family with the Avengers, but I don't think it was something she was really looking for at that time version of her black widow the film it was a is it the oh god i didn't even know that got released That's so <laughs> it's funny. not good um oh, yeah. point being <laughs> that they probably thought well she cares about family 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 we'll make stories about that and then they end up accidentally fucking assassinating her because they gave her a bunch of things that she would never have done if those are the values she had so i'm sitting there mm -hmm. frustrated that they've ruined the character but also like a fundamental appeal to the artistic merits of story yeah, uh, it is a Joss Whedon thing. I do want to stress, I think Joss Whedon is a really, overall, like, it's not, he's not perfect, but I think he's a very good writer. And I think it is unfortunate that he is um, a piece of shit. And, you know, and it's not like he's, he did anything illegal or anything like that. He shouldn't go to jail. But, like, he was obviously a dick on set to people. Um, and um, he didn't... Like, and he had time to reflect and maybe think, hey, I could do better. And he instead took that time to come out and say, oh, yeah, these people who are being mean to me are assholes. And it's like, you've learned nothing. You've learned nothing, dude. So as, as talented as a, of a guy that I think he is, I'm glad that he's not working anymore. Um, and if, if he can, like, grow as a person, then maybe it'd be nice to see him come back. But, like, He's got to grow as a person. He's got to evolve. And he, he seems like... That's my biggest critique of him right now. It seems like he's not willing to evolve as a person. And if, as, as long as he's not willing to evolve, um, just fuck off, dude. Storytelling. You've completely fucked it. Like, it's... You have to respect what they are, who they are, and what actions they would take. So, like, it's it's like two prongs, so to speak. Like, a, my investment in the art form and my investment in the character for how much they may or may not mean to me. Okay. What do you mean? What do you what are you expecting? Use that as an excuse to say, hey, they were never that good in the first place. And then what they'll do is they'll... What? What when was this published? This was you 
This was this was after the new Indiana Jones, right? Yeah, I didn't get that takeaway, but we've already discussed yeah, yeah. it, right? <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, that, that was that was released June thirtieth. Like, what what the fuck are you talking about? Like, I don't think that the new Indiana Jones movie or like the new a lot of these movies were saying these characters were never that good in the first place. Like, you're reaching super hard when. Like I said, the, that one yeah, I gave even, you about. Yeah, even if we say that they're disrespected there, like, the the takeaway of them, you know, the, the implied takeaway of they weren't that good in the first place, that's a very, I feel like that's a stretch, even well, if you remember were the, to agree that... The Nick Fury example I just gave you, wouldn't that, that would encompass that, right? They literally rewrote his history to be shitter than it used to be. I, I, guess... I would disagree with that, but I think that's shitty to throw like secret invasion at him when he hasn't seen it maybe throw an example at him that he has seen that he can identify with yes, so <laughs> i know, I know you're not as familiar of, with a lot of what stuff I'm... i don't don't watch and don't care but like this is what drink is referencing this is what's on his mind i know so he's referencing indiana jones and secret invasion and that's it that is not a cultural impact bro that's a really weak argument that's two sources um no i know and this is where the disconnect comes from and this, is, this is what we're learning about female. each other. Oh, replacement. Who is stronger than them, smarter than them, more capable than them, doesn't have any other weaknesses. And it's like they're trying to... Okay, he's coming at this from a very Star Wars-based perspective, which no... <laughs> I'm sorry. People who really care about film and people who really care about diversity of film, not diversity of races or genders, but diversity of, like, film, like, the actual, you know, film diet that you could consume... Most people aren't thinking about Star Wars, but it's clear that you're just thinking about Star Wars, right? Like... What you're describing is Star Wars. It's one movie. It's one... So he's he's talking about a couple of games, a few series. Obviously, all of them are mainstream, but the nonetheless valid, especially mm -hmm. in the context of mainstream. Movie! Say, hey, see this guy that you really liked? You're also, it happened in Star Wars multiple times. Mm -hmm. well, not just one movie. Talking oh? about Luke Skywalker! So, it happened in Star Wars multiple times. Uh, what? I don't even know what... Like, number one, I wouldn't even argue that happened to Luke Skywalker or, or Han Solo. So, I... The hot, Star Wars arguments are so fucking weak, I'm sorry. Luke Skywalker started at a low point and then ended doing the most badass thing we've ever seen any Jedi do in the history of this franchise, period. Han Solo um, was actually kind of badass. Like, yeah, he and Leia were broken up, but he was kind of badass and getting back to his roots when they meet him. Um, Harrison Ford was doing did a great job in that movie, by the way. So does Mark Hamill in Last Jedi. But anyways, uh, Han Solo's like getting back to his roots, and he he he's a, he's he ends up being a father figure to Rey very quickly. She looks up to him and respects him uh, immediately, and he dies trying to save his son, which is incredibly heroic. So I don't know how it's disrespecting either of those characters, which I assume would be the two examples. I don't know who else they could possibly be talking about. Walker. Yeah. yeah. Did you see what they did to Obi Wan? I watched them, but they they just like yeah, they did oh, the Han sorry, Solo. And then the Han he... Solo movie. No, Han Solo and the Force Awakens. Oh. <laughs> I think you like. Did you like Force him? Awakens? I can't remember. Are you still you. When it came out, I was like impressed by the uh, the practical effects. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't as jaded by the paint by numbers recreation of Episode Four uh, that would soon become the standard of of what soft re. So real quick, um, I think Force Awakens is pretty much a paint by numbers uh, Episode Four. That being said, it's really well done. It is a really well done version of Episode Four boots would become uh so my rating has changed since i've seen it uh but i i had a positive review when it came out because i was like oh this is fine let's see where it goes and then not only did that become like you know wind up being just some of the most annoying tropey obvious bullshit ever over time but what the series ultimately leads to detracts from the original movie for sure right like what i agree <laughs> i don't know if i would agree with that actually um because future movies exist, past movies are worse. I, I don't know. I don't know if I'm quite on board with that one. If, it, if that yeah. if, the, if that's where you're going, <laughs> you didn't even have a plan. 
You have two directors fucking arguing with each other about what the movies are. Like, go fuck yourself. Well, and for the record, I I enjoyed so. the Force Awakens when I first saw it, but um, yeah, Me when too. time went on, it uh, crumbled yeah. apart. Yeah, what it other worse? I mean, could you possibly be talking about right now? Well, we've got a new and improved version here, so you have to like them even more now. Of course you do, because that's how you... You're talking about Luke's... Sc what other movie could you possibly be talking about where it's like, oh yeah, we've created a new female character, and not only have we replaced... So about this, like, are you familiar with the MCU's... Um, it's very odd. Like, in Phase 4 and 5... I get the feeling Ma really wants to say MCU there. But, you know, he knows he shouldn't because he, he, he has to intellectualize the bigotry that those guys do. So he can't. So he has to make those arguments, but he can't say shit like that. But you, you can get that sense. If we've had a, like, well, what is, I don't even know what the actual number would be, but to not exaggerate, it's like a 300% increase in female characters, which isn't a problem in and of itself. But uh, when they're all written like <laughs> shit, and a lot of them they are uh, will. All written like shit. A lot of them will. Really? Really? They're all rich and like shit? All of them? All of them? I don't know if I would agree to that whatsoever. Um, I actually think uh, uh, Miss Marvel's a really fun character. I like her a lot. Captain Marvel, I think, is decent. I wasn't as thrilled with her in the Marvels, but I thought she was fine in the first Captain Marvel movie. Um, Jane Foster's Thor, I thought, was a badass, but, I mean, she's also, uh, spoiler for a couple-year-old movie, dead. Um... No, they're not all bad. Will introduce themselves in comparison with the established male version of whatever character it is. So, you know, with Thor, we had girl Thor. Oh, he's, he's got his chat saying MCU. There you go. With Ant Man, you have his daughter in in Quantumania. Even though we already had wasps, I don't know, whatever. Black Widow, even Black Widow, her sister is introduced as the replacement Black Widow, and she is a lot better than Black Widow. She didn't make Black Widow's. Nice. Wait, she's better than Black Widow? When did, did was it established that she's better than Black Widow? I didn't get that established whatsoever. Stakes. Loki. That's the thing. I don't recall any of these. Like, the, the it's legacy characters, so they would take on the legacy. I don't recall being established as being better as any of the original characters whatsoever, though. I don't recall a Kate Bishop being established as being better than Hawkeye. I don't recall uh, uh, Yelena being established as better than uh, 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 Natasha. I don't recall uh, uh, Jane Foster being established as better than Thor. I don't recall any of that. He, Sylvie is the girl counterpart to him, and she... Sylvie definitely isn't established as being better than Loki. Definitely. Like, at the end of the season, like, he stops her because she wants to kill the guy, and he... Well, no, wait, she does end up killing the guy. Never mind. But um, he essentially is the one arguing for the more moral and logical uh, option, and she is against it. He, like, it's better than him in every single way. It, it's embarrassing. Not remotely. And weird. Um... And Selby definitely takes a backseat to, to Tom Hiddleston Loki in, uh, uh, uh in the second season, for sure, where he becomes a fucking god, a badass god, by the way. Obviously, I, I assume you've heard about Hulk and She-Hulk, some of the most famous clips from her explaining her trauma is more something I, that she's dealt with. That is her personal experience, and she's talking about stuff from a woman's perspective. The fact that you, like, again, that's an anti-woke argument to just harp on that fucking scene from She-Hulk. It is her own experiences. And, oh my god, um, just let it go. The fact that you get triggered by a woman talking about her own personal life experiences is quite a fucking tell. And it's noteworthy how apparently EFAP aren't anti-woke guys, but they are. They harp on all the exact anti-woke talking points. Uh, they just don't have the same language. They intellectualize the anti-woke talking points. With than he has? I... I, I'm definitely aware of it and actively avoided it, yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then, like, Doctor Strange, he's... You got uh, America is sort of taken over as the... She's the one that takes the... Uh, that's not even a passing the torch thing. That She's just a, a supporting character. Um, Doctor Strange has way more screen time, and he has an arc. Uh, America has an arc as well. Uh, Scarlet Witch has an arc as well. But Doctor Strange definitely has the, the most screen time and is the character we follow throughout the, the whole movie. The final action. 
She was annoying, uh, yeah. and and it's unfortunate no, because was her name America or what? what yeah, Chavez. Um, and they don't give her America Chavez. Yeah, they, they don't give her character. They just give her she is girl who by the end of the film she's scared, and then he says you can do it, and then she does it. She was yeah, she had it all along. Asshole yeah. girl. Who, and yeah. so many of these fucking characters arc, so they had it all along instead of actually having yeah. to like fight for it. That's lots of characters arcs throughout all of history, male and female. Um, they always had the potential. They just uh, uh, had to to figure that out for themselves. Um, yes, they are doing more women with that arc, but like they men throughout history have had that arc as well. That's um, a very common arc. Ridiculous or struggle to get their powers. Would you say that the would you say that because of how Marvel writes its female characters, that the Marvel Cinematic Universe is sexist against women? Yes. I think you <laughs> could ironically make a pretty... Yeah, you could... I would agree. Yeah, if you, yeah it, it's really, it's really kind of shit. Yeah, it's a shit argument. <laughs> because the MCU had good female characters, and it invented shit new ones, or it... Good female characters in it? Uh, they actually were very limited. They've had uh, Black Widow. Black Widow would be the obvious one. But what, uh, Maria Hell, who is definitely a supporting character and just a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent, you know, a skilled S.H.I.E.L.D. agent, but a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent. What, uh, Pepper Potts, who is the love interest for Iron Man? Um, yeah, they haven't really had a huge base of uh, female characters until recently. And honestly, part of the issue is that Fox has had the right to X-Men, which is frequently, which is changing. Because Marvel's most famous women characters are X-Men. Probably Storm is their most famous woman character. They didn't get the rights to her till recently. Oh, Sharon Carter and Peggy Carter are good examples, especially uh, uh, Peggy. Um, although she is just a love interest as well, she's badass. Ruined the good ones that we had. Mm -hmm. To the point where I'm struggling to think... Yeah, the, these are just anti-woke arguments right now that we're listening to. These guys are just like any other chud. Just like any other chud. What good female characters we have. Jessica Jones is badass. I love Jessica Jones. Uh, season one was amazing. Season two, didn't, I didn't like it as much, but it was still good. Have left. Why don't you just knock female out of that? What good characters do we have left? What good characters, period. But, but you know, to, to be, I guess to be topical... I'm trying to think of, you know, who are the non-shit female characters we've got. Um, I know. Cosmo. Oh, Cosmo. Yeah, that's true. Cosmo's great. I like Cosmo. There you go. So, yeah. uh... So, I mean, do they not like Gamora anymore? Do they not like Nebula? Those are great characters. I mean, Guardians, the Guardians movies were amazing. Um, they had plenty of great women characters. Are we, are we in agreement that the Sony Marvel is doing better than Marvel Marvel right now? You mean Venom, Venom 2, Morbius, and, <laughs> like, I don't know. Spider-Verse. Oh, yeah, okay. That's, uh, yes, yes. I'm going to say yes. I'm going to, because you yeah. got, you got that, and then you got, technically, No Way Home belongs more so to Sony than it does Marvel, right? So, and that was, like, a yeah. far more redeemable. Wait, wait, wait. Um, so, Sony is better at this. I'm really getting confused. So, Mahler's argument is, wait, hold on. Let's, let's. <laughs> like i don't know spider-verse oh yeah okay what good characters period but but you know to non-shit female characters we've got oh cosmo yeah that's true are we are we in agreement that the sony marvel is doing better than marvel marvel right now you mean venom venom 2 morbius and <laughs> like i don't know spider-verse oh yeah okay oh his whole argument is sony marvel's doing better uh no um, with the exception of Spider Verse, of course, a huge exception to Spider Verse. Hey, that's uh, yes, yes. I'm gonna say yes. I'm gonna because you yeah. got you got that, and then you got technically No Way Home belongs more so to Sony than it does Marvel, right? So, and that was like a yeah. far more redeemable entry in the f Phase Four and Five. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess I would concede that. Yeah. Isn't that funny? It is kind of yeah. But I mean, it is. Yeah, who thought that we would get there? Well, who's is it more or less funny than DreamWorks taking over Pixar in terms of? I was just about to say that. Content? Damn. I mean, I I don't know if I like. Listen, I Pixar or Pixar has been spotty the past couple of years. I don't know if I would say they're bad, but they, it's not been as good as their peak. Like 
they have never reached up our Wally qualities uh, since then. Uh, Inside Out was pretty good though, um, but I wouldn't argue that uh, DreamWorks has taken over whatsoever because uh, DreamWorks hasn't really been doing great either. I mean, I can't think of any uh, Pixar movie that I've ever seen that I enjoyed less than Kung Fu Panda 4, which was uh, bad. Oh, yeah, and Moving the Goalpost, No Way Home with Sony. Yeah, uh, it's worth noting, every single uh, Sony live-action Spider-Man movie uh, since Spider-Man 3 has been spotty, with the exception of the ones where Marvel has a, a influence over the product. That ha Something has to be said about that. I was hating Pixar before. It was cool. So... <laughs> Where did you start hating Pixar? Which movie? Toy Story 3. Ooh, interesting choice. Mm, a little early. Wow. Toy Story 3 is pretty good. Earlier than most. Yeah. Well. Face them with a female, but we're going to say that the old male version is bad. What other movie could you possibly... Can... And you see, like, YMS, like, I like Toy Story 3, and I can disagree with his take on it. But at least with him, I get the sense that he, like, cares about the medium and has actual, like, thoughtful analysis of it. And I don't get that from the other three. Who, again, it's intellectualizing anti-woke arguments. Can we, can I, literally, can I get some suggestions in the chat? I don't want to just be, like, talking out my ass from my limited perspective of, like, me watching art house movies, you know, and, like, me watching some Marvel movies and some... Uh, Star Wars movies like he's talking about this as if this is like mainstream this is what every movie is doing and he's literally just talking about Star Wars right is this not what's happening like he's literally only talking about Star Wars here and he's not saying it attacking and deconstructing the archetypes that they resent but rely on is that a good bit of made up analysis what the, yeah what they want to do is yeah, use please them, uh, somebody prove me wrong new characters but it's like trying to take a character that uh you know you've bonded with over a period of years if not decades that like you grew up with and stuff like indiana jones being a great example uh, or luke skywalker go. for example um characters that you've really come to know and love he and says for example is, present them as old but he's only talking about that right men who are well he's not sad. talking about star wars he's talking about indiana jones when he's as... he he brought up star wars and indiana jones right here as we've said there's loads drinker would give you a list there if you really loads. wanted them and lonely, yeah. they've given mm -hmm. up on life, they're broken down, and they're kind of pathetic now, and they use that as an excuse to say, hey, they were never that good in the first place. And then what they'll do is they'll bring in a new diverse female replacement who is stronger than them. Like, did you watch, um, Gen... not Genesis, Dark Fate? Uh, Terminator? <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> so, do you know, <laughs> no. like, Dark Fate opens with, um, another Arnie getting sent back, and he just shotguns John Connor to death. Damn, I just... And then every every time you guys talk, and I'm sorry to interrupt. Every time you guys talk about a movie that you've seen that I haven't seen, that you like ruined your life. I just feel bad. <laughs> it's not. Like, no, no. This like, this is. I want to make all you sound awful. Like I feel like I'm making the right decisions by just not considering them things but like, that I have to watch. The more I, feel, I, I feel like, like I'm just doing a good job, you know. You see, it sounds like Adam's doing the smart thing, where it's like, hey, I don't like a whole lot of Hollywood movies, so I'm not going to watch a whole lot of Hollywood movies. Which you know, which. If EFAP were honest actors, that's the type of shit they would do. The same goes for Nerdrotic and Critical Drinker. Well, it's, the, the reason it came to my head is because of what I feel are going to be good. It's because of what Drinker just said. I feel like if I if I just say this to you, it'll make it, you laugh, right? So, Damn, the, the, like, the, this I is the thing. New Terminator that I could, would want to watch that movie. New Terminator, big budget. Oh my god, James Cameron approves of it. Here we go. So exciting. Opens up. John Connor is immediately killed, and then in the future, Sarah Connor. Has to defend a new girl who is apparently going to be the the one to hold you know to carry the the new savior of humanity because yes skynet was defeated unfortunately in the ruins of skynet uh legion rises up which is another self-aware ai that's going to take over the world with robots mm -hmm. and uh nukes and then at the end of the film they're like actually you're not gonna have a kid or a son or a girl or whatever that's gonna lead the world you're going to lead it because that's that you know and, and they make this like big thing about how Sarah Connor kind of hates that she wasn't valued as an individual, but instead the carrier of John Connor, which is, it's just like, did you surgically do this? Why the hell did you write all of that that way? That sounds like the most annoying so and like, lame kinda... thing you could give Terminator fans. Uh, Pista, like... Uh... I get where you're coming from, I do. Um, you know, you're saying I hate Pixar before Wally -E, blaming the studio for the disappearance of traditional animation. I get that. I actually do. And I actually wish, uh, especially after Disney acquired Pixar, 
Uh, I know he's a questionable fellow, and I'm not endorsing anything he did, but John Laster said when Disney acquired Pixar that he thought uh, since Pixar is essentially part of Disney that Pixar should do the computer animated stuff, and then Disney should go back to hand-drawn animation. And, of course, they didn't do that, and now Disney animated movies and Pixar animated movies are pretty indistinguishable, for better or worse. I guess Disney stuff usually focuses a bit more on a princess or something like that. Um, but, yeah, I miss hand-drawn animation. Um, you still might be able to get some with uh, DC anime direct to, to, to uh, video stuff. Uh, some of that can be really good. Uh, you still get hand-drawn animated stuff, honestly. That's decent, but, like, not the big stuff. Not anymore. Oh, God, no. When it, it, when it's all AI, we're all, uh, Fuck. I refuse to watch a movie made by AI. Um, listen, AI can be a useful tool. And, frankly, it could be used to make uh, our worlds better. But instead, it's it's it seems like something that's going to be fucking abused... To just take over people's jobs and just spit out garbage. So they're like kind of like disparaging the Sarah Connor character. They, what I'm getting at is like they actually assassinate literally Mister Mister Connor, and then they make her completely alternate oh, wow. to what her character would be. They erase and undo like Skynet, but then they replace it with something called Legion that's exactly the fucking same. It's like the worst thing ever. And it's like, why? Why did you do all of this? You you told the same story, much worse, but with a girl instead of a guy. What's what's the idea? What are you doing? Well, I mean, all the, the Terminator movies have kind of been remakes of each other. Um, even 1 and 2. The fact is, 1 and 2, like, 2 is just insanely well done. Um, and frankly, 2 was so insanely well done, it made it kind of impossible to properly follow it up. I am not a fan of really any Terminator movie after the second one. Probably the closest I'll get to is Salvation, just because it was fucking different. Because what you have is Salvation, and then three attempts at Terminator 3. And none of the attempts at Terminator 3 have been worth a damn, and then Salvation is fine. At least it tried something different. Um, I would say Dark Fate's probably my favorite of the three attempts at Terminator 3, but, like, yeah, none of them thrill me. I'm not a fan of any of them. I think that I think that a lot of the motivations when it comes to uh, these terrible writing decisions are based on them thinking that they're going to have a successful film that they can uh, make into a franchise, right? Like the Mummy yeah. was supposed to be the start of the Dark Universe. Yeah, yeah, I, that that uh, yeah. Well, I mean, I don't agree with all of them being terrible writing decisions, but yeah, Dark Fate, I think, was obviously an attempt to reboot the franchise into another franchise. Uh, perhaps if the you know new Bill and Ted were even more massively successful, then we would have those two other characters continuing to make films right now or whatever. Uh, I think that I think that a lot of the bad writing comes from them preemptively trying to set things up and being like. Well, yeah, why would we care about the old characters? Because we're trying to start this new shit, and the writers are just so stupid and ignorant <laughs> yeah. about why anybody would want to see the, these old characters presented positively, right? So, yeah. Again, I, I'm... I see the chat, and somebody's saying, I think YMS is not trying to be bad faith. Of course he's not trying to be bad faith. He's trying to be good faith and take their points in consideration. I almost feel like EFAP fans watch this and think, Anybody who disagrees with EFAP is bad faith somehow? It feels like that. Because I don't... Like, they keep on saying bad faith, but they don't seem to understand what the fuck bad faith means. Bad faith means they're not willing to um, um, take or consider alternate arguments. And fuck. Um, you can see the history of my channel. I've tried to take anti-woke arguments into consideration. And just the more I saw them, the more I saw the patterns, I was just like, this is bullshit argumentation. It's, it's garbage. I, I I think I think I'll concede on it being a thing that happens, but the intention is, is what I take issue with. Okay. And smarter than them, more capable than them, doesn't have any other weaknesses, and it's like they're trying to say, "Hey, see this guy that you really liked? Well, we've got a new and improved version here, so you have to like them even more now." You say Luke Skywalker as an example. What's what's any other example? Of course you do, because that's how human emotions work. <sighs> no, it's not. People don't think that way. And so the more you try and slot these, like, fake pod people... So you, you, YMS has made a good point in his video, and the, the, the counter-argument is Rags going, Ugh. 
great work. I mean, I guess I will get that way sometimes, but it, usually it's when somebody has to say something really outrageous. YMS didn't say anything outrageous there. Pull replacements in to, to, to like supplement these classic characters that we loved, uh, the more people reject it. And that's why Indiana Jones is fucking tanking at the box office. This did Indiana Jones do that? Like, it kept the same main character. It didn't replace it with a female character and say, Indiana Jones is bad. I don't know if you're aware, but Kathleen Kennedy talked about how uh, Helena Shaw could very well take over for the franchise at this point as a replacement. They always talk about that. Um, the movie doesn't, like, really set that up, though. Indiana Jones in her own franchise, but obviously that's not going to happen now because the film tanked. That yeah, it was weird because, like, a lot of money. even, like, the... Even the, I don't even know if I would argue that the film itself implied that, right? Like, like the only reason we're saying that is because Kathleen Kennedy's saying that, right? Yeah. Um. No. Yeah. The, the film doesn't imply that. Oh, well, th that's to confirm that was a goal. That was the, there was a passing of the torch element to it, right? She's she's friends with basically. Said, she, she there isn't really like she's just kind of the sidekick throughout the movie. They never do a passing of the torch thing for in that movie. Everybody Potential she pulls... though, right? Uh, yeah, if they were going to make another movie, if yeah. they were going to make another movie, like if in, if Dial of Destiny did well, then yeah, which I don't is, which think is, that well, we'd see Harrison Ford in it. It would be no. Helena Shaw taking over. Which is probably like how how well did Crystal Skull do? Right? Was that made like, a not lot a... of money? It was very financially successful. Yeah, made like eight hundred million dollars. Damn. Yeah. I think Crystal Skull did pretty well. This one made half like, that, and it cost this more. one. This one, so, I think, yeah, I think in order to it's at right now, and, it and in order to break even, even, I think it had to make just shy of six hundred million. So and that, yeah, and, and even then, that ain't great when yeah, you spend three hundred uh, million yeah. dollars to get six. I think it's safe. Million. I think it's safe to say that uh, we will probably not see another Indiana Jones movie, if ever. In uh, hopefully, <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> clip it, clip it, clip it. Rag said, yeah, we will I will. Pro yeah. Wait, 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 wait. You don't even know what you're clipping. Rag said, We will probably not see. Oh, we will probably, we will probably clips. not see. Absolutely, got him exposed. The Nazi, you did it. It came out. It's, I, EFAP. it's a Freudian EFAP split. EFAP will probably not see. We'll never recover, <laughs> and probably. You you literally just you literally had this entire tirade saying like, hey, they're trying to do this thing where like they're replacing it with women characters and saying that the male characters are bad. This is why Indiana Jones is tanking at the box office. Indiana Jones didn't do that. This movie cost three hundred billion dollars to make. There's a there's a plethora of reasons why that movie tanked. So much stuff to. But yes, there are a plethora of reasons why it tanked. Absolutely. Um, I think like I said, long run, Indiana Jones is gonna make its money back because it's fucking Indiana Jones. Um, it's a franchise, it's bankable, but yeah, uh, it did not do well at the box office. Talk about in terms of like mm -hmm. time of release, yeah. the choice of story to tell, the way it was marketed, Ugh, the, the fucking aging, and how fatigue. boring it was. It's so boring. It needs to make like my the the theater theater board. Hello, you just listened. Okay, so that was it. So I think, um, that was probably the most interesting EFAP video I've ever seen, if for no other reason than because YMS, even though I don't agree with all his points, he I felt like he was coming at it from an honest perspective. Um, so that that is uh, something to consider, and that's good. Um, but yeah, you could also really see how uh, the EFAP guys just intellectualize anti-woke arguments. Non-goddamn stop. Non-goddamn stop. Now, now guys... I'm going to sign out. I'm going to sign out. But guess what? There's more to watch. Hold on. Hold on. So so you got uh, uh, actual fandom on here um, talking about the Don Birch Society. Let's, uh, maybe we'll troll this chat a little bit. Have, some, have a little bit of fun before we sign out. Is it going to load? claim to and pretend to criticize Marvel and anything that Disney puts out. It's not that difficult of a concept to understand that that's just the same thing. Really? I mean, no, you're not a multi fucking trillion to understand that that's just the same thing. We can arrange it, Gary. It can be arranged. You're fucking dead behind the eyes, grifter, snake, piece of shit. 
So guys, I would suggest heading on over to uh, to Actual Phantom channel because I'm just signing out. Um, oh, he's doing the free clip. He's doing the free stream. But guys, th thanks for joining me. Uh, party on and be excellent to each other. The key isn't winning or losing. It's making the attempt. I may never be what I ought to be, want to be. I'll probably how will I know? This, although I, I, I also have to watch it. Sure, now. it's I'll scary. It. I'll hang out to what's the alternative? Stagnation. A safer, more terrible form of death. Not of the body, but of the spirit. An animal knows what it is. And it accepts it. I will a man may know what chat. he is, but he questions, he dreams, he strives, changes, grows. There you go. Um, enjoy that stream, and thanks for joining me, guys. Uh, have a good one. Party on and be excellent to each other.